Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Victoria here at Radiant Moon Tarot. This is your weekly reading for August 21st through 27th of 2023. If you're new to my channel, hello, welcome to you. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm always grateful for every single one of you. This week, uh, we have the sun entering Virgo on the 23rd. So happy birthday to all of you Virgos out there. Um, we also do have Mercury going retrograde on the 23rd. So same day. Woo um, and that is till September 15th. So whenever Mercury goes retro, grade some of you might be thinking a little bit maybe feeling a little bit anxious um, but you may also be overthinking things a little bit okay retrograde when mercury goes retrograde mercury rules the mind our thoughts our communication our decision making so it is very important to just stay grounded to take things slow um, now there's some people out there that would say oh never make a major decision during mercury retrograde and the fact is is that's not always feasible um, we do life goes life goes on right we don't just freeze in place um, because of a planet going retrograde but what we do is we uh, be a little bit more cautious so pay close attention to details, get a second opinion, sleep on something, because sometimes we have to make major decisions, right, regardless of where the planets are. So if you do have to make any big purchases or sign any contracts or make some um, big life changing decisions at all, just make sure that you do take that step back and that you pause and you reflect and maybe even get somebody to um you know, have a look over something, especially if it's some contractual docu documents of some kind. All right. It's just going to give you a little bit of peace of mind. And it's just going to make sure that, you know, someone else looking at something, right, you know, four eyes is better than two kind of thing. Okay. So um, just to keep that in mind, but whenever a planet goes retrograde, it's an opportunity to rethink, to revisit something, um, maybe do something a little bit different, refresh some energy there as well. And of course, to just you know, kind of take a step back a little bit. We do have on the 27th as well, Mars entering Libra and make love, not war people. Okay. Libra is the, is the sign of karma, of balance, of relationships, of contracts. Okay. And so, yeah, so we want to try and find a way to smooth the waters, to embrace love and light and, you know, try to, uh, try to avoid being, you know, too, err, uh, you know, um, you know, bull in a china shop, right? And that fighter kind of energy, right? And with the Mercury retrograde, again, another reminder to take a step back. So with this, uh, Mars and Libra energy, focus on relationships and collaborate with other people over the next few weeks, right? So all of that's going to help you to navigate not just your week ahead, but also the next few weeks. All right. So let's get right into your readings. Of course, some of you have heard this before, and we do have a contest going over here at the moon. So if you are interested in entering to possibly win a free personal reading, all you need to do is watch any of my videos all the way through August, um, including this one. Um, you need to like the video. You need to subscribe to my channel because the, this is for subscribers, of course free to subscribe just hit that button hit the notification bell and if you're really lucky maybe YouTube will actually notify you that there's a video posted it's been going on for months across all channel channels on YouTube and I don't know if the no notifications just aren't working so well they're also removing subscribers by the way so if you think you're already subscribed to my channel or others just double check and make sure you still are because those are mysteriously disappearing anyways so like this video subscribe and in the box down down below write I am abundant leave that comment there and I'll know that you are interested in entering the contest for the reading I will be announcing the winner um, the Labor Day long weekend so the first weekend of September I'll put a video out and announce that winner um, and uh, the deadline to enter is August 31st all right so having said all of that let's get right into your weekly readings so all of your timestamps are going to be in the description box and the comment section down below so you can easily navigate watch your Sun Moon rising and your Venus sign readings as well we do still have Venus in retrograde so uh, shaking certain things up a little bit and for some people it's been beautiful and magical and you get second chances at things and other people who 
man oh man has it ever been a little bit uh, we'll call it spicy and just leave it there so watch all of your signs timestamps down below hope you guys have a magical week we're going to start with aries Hello Aries, welcome to your weekly reading. Let's have a look and see what we've got going on for you guys. Message for Aries. Of course, the North Node right now is in Aries in your sign. So you might be really looking at the future and making some plans and, uh, you know, hopefully getting a clear sense of direction. Where are you headed? What are you doing? Um, we have the mending energy here for you. So we do have these retrogrades going on and in the mending energy, this is about fixing something, um, possibly collaborating with somebody. Maybe you've had a rift in a partnership somewhere and this is a week where you can maybe get that back on track, especially with that Libra energy that we've got coming in, right? Make love, not war. Okay. Um, you know, a little bit of a step back right into the sixties, seventies kind of era, but mending things here this week. So you might feel the need to fix them something, to revisit something, to do something over, or to put some fine-tuning tweaks on something this week, but this can be something in your workplace, something in you, right, something around your home, but especially focused on some relationships there this week. And quite often people do hear the word relationship and immediately jump into a romantic one, but that's not necessarily the case, right? Mending can represent healing the past, letting bygones be bygones. It can be about finding, uh, finding ways to collaborate better or to communicate better with people around you. Um, and this can be your friendships, your business partnerships, your family relationships, and of course, yes, your romantic ones there as well. So something is on the mix, uh, on the mend, something is being being fixed here and someone may extend you an olive branch this week or maybe you are the one that's going to take that first step we've got the three of swords in reverse we're on the path to path to healing something there that has been stuck for a while okay so that's going to be important we've got the page of pentacles there for you and we have the knight of cups so yes yeah, some of you are making peace you're making amends with someone in your life or you're figuring out how to move forward we've got the ten of cups at the bottom of the deck here for you ten of cups of course represents um a completion and being very happy safe secure um in what you have gotten done what you've accomplished of course the ten of cups is where our heart and soul are singing they're filled with joy we're happy we're content um and especially in our family or in our relationships in that energy so uh, a lot of wonderful energies going on but yes we do have the three of swords in reverse so something may have been lingering for a while or maybe maybe there's something dredged up from the past and this is something that maybe has been really bothering you weighing on your mind okay or maybe it's something that you've forgotten about that's come up it may actually come out of the blue for you okay but whatever it is when we get this this is something you've got to let it go or you've got to work through something you've got to address something here in order for you to move forward in a healthy way now some of you here in this um in this energy are breaking free out of something as well and you are on demand right you are like you know what I'm not going to be stuck in this situation anymore. It's causing me nothing but grief. I've dealt with it long enough. I can't heal this thing, right? I can't fix it. So it's time for me to look for something new. So some of you here with the page of pentacles, you might be learning something about yourself this week. You might be discovering uh, some information. You may be putting yourself forward, right? And, you know, having a fresh start with something in your life, you're fixing something, it's all good to go with the page of pentacles, right? You might even have some really great news. Um, or that again, that kind of fresh start that leapfrogging over a little bit of a hurdle, but the page of pentacles can also bring in the new. And so again, if there's something here that you can't fix, and you're coming into that realization that you can't, then the page of pentacles has you looking out into the future, have you looking at different options and saying, okay, I think it's time for me to leave this situation. So some of you do have some new beginnings on the horizon, okay, but the page of pentacles can represent something um, prospering, something manifesting into your life here, and it can represent gifts, right, that good news. And so again, some of you are really getting things settled 
um, this week. All right. But the page of pentacles can bring in something really quite, uh, very interesting, very happy it can represent gifts. And we, let's face it, we do have the knight of cups here as well. So some of you, there's an apology. Maybe someone buys you flowers. They bring you a gift of some kind. Okay. Or it's just the gift of, um, getting something resolved in your week ahead. But the page of pentacles, you could also be learning something as well. Um, very bookwormy and, and and its energy is the page of pentacles and always willing to learn um, new things or learn from experiences. So there may be something that's been going on here where there is a learning element to it. And you're like, OK, now I understand. Um, so you're not just learning or, or getting some information. You're actually understanding it. But some of you do have some love and romance blossoming in your life because we do have Mr. Romance himself. We've got the Knight of Cups. So this can be a male or a female. It doesn't matter. Matter, but there could be a significant person in your life here where they do have that olive branch for you or you are resolving some issues so you can move forward in a relationship. Some of you, I mean, with the Page of Pentacles and the Knight of Cups, you could be, because uh, the pages can represent children, right? So maybe you're resolving something in your family unit, something with your children. Maybe you're resolving some money issues, right? That Pentacles can be money issues there. Um, some of you might have some news about maybe you've been talking with your significant other about starting a family and this may be where you make some decisions there. And of course, the Knight of Cups with the Page of Pentacles can be an engagement ring. Okay, so things like that, a proposal or something, right? So the Knight of Cups can quite often bring a proposal of some kind, whatever that looks like, whether it's love and romance based, whether it's job oriented, right? Because this can be a job offer or an opportunity in your career path that really, really makes you happy. And it's like, oh my goodness, I'm on top of the world. So if you're looking for a new job, this can actually be really positive um, experience for you in your week ahead. So we do have some wonderful things going on. But the Knight of Cups can also just really uh, be a friend in your life as well. And maybe they do have some... Um, you know, some really good words of advice or something for you in this energy. All right. Um, but you might be meeting some new people this week here as well. But ultimately, the Knight of Cups, too, is your energy is moving forward or taking action or doing something that you love, um, being a little bit creative. Maybe you're learning something new this week and whatever that is, you're taking action. You're maybe on a quest. The Knights are always on a quest and uh, you've um really, uh, how should I say, you're really embracing your heart space, right? And you're really positive about where you're headed. We've got the Six of Cups coming in here as your advice from Spirit and the Six of Cups. Um, now, there's a couple of different things. Number one, it can be a return card. So a return of something or revisiting something, right? Something from your past. So again, in this Three of Swords energy, you might run into an old friend. And maybe you had a previous rift with this old friend and you had a falling out and maybe you don't even remember why. And you might bump into them and, you know, this is where you can maybe either restore um, the relationship or this is where maybe you can understand kind of, hey, what was going on, right? Because in our younger years, sometimes we're not always open and communicative and we don't even always understand what's going on in our lives. So you might have an old love coming back. You might have an old argument that comes back and you've got to resolve it once and for all. So there could be something coming back um, into your world this week. Uh, and so Spirit is just wanting to make sure that you're aware of that. But the Six of Cups ultimately is a reminder to embrace our inner child, to live in the here and now. It may be where you do get a gift because quite often the Six of Cups, you might be getting a gift and um, the traditional imagery, this one we've got a dog, but in the traditional imagery of it, we've got two children in a garden, in a field, and one child is giving the other one some flowers. And we do have the Knight of Cups here with a bouquet of flowers. So some of you may get a gift of some kind in your your week ahead. Now, it might be some advice. It might be a door of opportunity. Um, it might just be, you know, your ability to find peace and healing and forgiveness, but it can be something that you can actually touch and feel. Some of you might actually get some flowers this week. All right. But the Six of Cups is also spirit reminding you to have fun. Have fun. Do something you enjoy. Get a little creative, right? Remember the, uh, the moment is here and now. 
The Six of Cups reminds us that our past experiences help us in our present day because this is what's giving us knowledge. This is what's giving us understanding. This is what's forming us and making us who we are today, right? And then so that we can make plans for the future. So you might be feeling a little nostalgic this week and thinking about the past. That can be Mercury retrograde, right? As can someone coming back from the past, right? So something we dredge, dredge something up there. Um, so you might be looking at the past in your present moment to make plans for the future, okay? But Spirit wants to remind you, make sure that if you are looking at the past, not to have those rose-colored glasses on because sometimes we do get a little caught up in nostalgia. And sometimes, you know, the mind has an interesting way of protecting us and our minds are big supercomputers. And if something is, you know, um, you know, really not part of our current world, then we do tend to gloss things over, especially the difficulties that we've had somewhere along the way. So Spirit says, you know, remember, don't put on those rose colored glasses, because when we do look back, sometimes we do forget the really painful things and we only remember the good things, right? So just, uh, just a little heads up for you there. But ultimately, be in the present, be in the here and now and have some fun the Four of Pentacles brings you stability and security, and this is a blessing headed your way this week. So your ability to open up rather than being closed off, your ability to understand the difference between wants and needs, your ability to find stability and security in a situation, and ultimately, um, you know, figure out how to build upon your foundation. So the Four of Pentacles as a blessing for you, right? Quite often, the Four of Pentacles are a little bit closed off, right? And we need to recognize the need, you know, to be when do I need to protect myself, my assets, my resources, and my energy and when do I need to be a little bit more open? Um, so in this energy, I feel you're more opening up than closing off. And I think you're going to get some understanding there and you're at least going to feel like you've got both feet on the ground. Also, your ability to ground your energy is going to benefit you this week as well, um, especially with, you know, when we're entering Virgo season and Virgo is very um, very earthy, right? Earth sign and also very much focused on money and resources and also your personal values. And Virgo also does represent matters of the mind and doing that soul searching. And remember the six of cups, sometimes for soul searching a little bit, we do look at our past. All right. But I think here we've got some stability coming in, which is awesome. So I'm going to leave that there for you, Aries. I hope there was something there for you. If so, please like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to enter the contest if you're interested. And have a wonderful, wonderful week. Hello there, Taurus. Let's have a look and see what we've got coming in here for you guys. Thank you very much in your week ahead. We've got the co-create energy. This is beautiful. I love it when this particular card comes out. It all has to do with manifestation, new beginnings, making improvements or something entering your life. So co-create reminds us that we're always creating our reality in conjunction with the universe, in conjunction with spirit here. In this deck, whenever we do have an egg, we can see something forming inside that egg. So what are you looking to create? What is blossoming in your life right now? What is about to hatch? And you're on the right track. So whatever you've got going on, keep doing whatever you're doing. Be open to new experiences. Be open to new ways of thinking, of doing. Be open to new opportunities. And, of course, keep that open mind. Open, 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 open. We want to make sure that you are ready to receive. You might be feeling a little bit creative this week as well in your own energy and this is spirit saying that sometimes when we do things that are fun we embrace our inner creativity we're all creative in some way right then we feel more stable we feel more grounded we feel connected and so there might be something here this week where you might want to roll up your sleeves you might want to you know maybe if you uh are you know uh really good in the kitchen or maybe you're learning how to be really good in the kitchen right this is about picking up 
up a recipe, throwing on that apron and cooking something, trying something new and different. Um, you know, maybe you've always wanted to kind of paint or you want to put the finishing touches on something there, or maybe you're, you know, coming out of the closet in some way and revealing things to people this week in this energy, right? This is what I've created, right? And, you know, maybe you've been keeping something under wraps because you're not sure how things will be received by other people. So it really does all evolve around creativity this week and, of course, your ability to manifest things into the world. So take a step forward. Um, whenever you're called to action in this energy, make sure you do take some initiative, take some action. And because, you know, spirit's manifesting things for you and it's up to you what you do with it right? Do you sit in fear? Do you ignore something? Um, you know, do you procrastinate on things, right? Or do you just go for what you want, right? So sometimes it's not just about having an opportunity. Um, it's also what we do with that opportunity. So you're very much being called into action. I feel like some of you here in this energy, we've got the King of Pentacles, Seven of Cups, and we've got the Emperor coming out here as well. I think some of you are trying to figure out something to do with your relationship, a family ship, or your um, thinking about perhaps uh, how to make or spend your money. So money might be a focus for you this week. Um, possibly even your relationships with commitment because we do have the king of pentacles. Now this can be your energy. So Taurus in this energy, you're either feeling like you are have mastered something like you've been very successful this is a very abundant energy but it's also one where you're taking the lead and you're committed to your goals and you're very focused on what it is that you want to accomplish that you want to achieve and you're feeling very confident that you will get what it is that you're looking for or find the answers or find the resources right this is very confident energy but also very calm and patient energy right but when we're committed to something we put one foot in front of the other and we trust in our journey, trust in our path. And of course, the kings master things, but the kings are also in charge. And we've got very big leadership energy coming in here for you. So you could be very simply in the energy of embracing your personal power, right? And focusing on a strategy, a plan, or making a decision this week. And again, your money, your career, your relationships, your home, um, all of that stuff is highlighted for you here in this very earthy energy of the king of pentacles um you might be seeking advice this week as well the emperor card that comes out does uh, quite often bring an element of advice and the king of pentacles may also be a person in your world that can give you some advice or maybe someone you can collaborate with um, or someone new that you meet and maybe that too um but as a person who gives you some advice wisdom or guidance in some way the King of Pentacles, someone very good with money, with real estate, with investing. It might be a banker. Um, it could even be your boss. All right. And they may have an opportunity for you, um, you know, or, uh, you know, just that, you know, little bit of guidance that maybe you're looking for, right? You could walk into the bank this week and say, okay, I need some advice. I am working really hard for my money. I've got some savings. How do I make my money work for me? right? I don't want to work as hard for my money. How do I make that? How do I turn that around, right? I want my money to work for me and I want to be comfortable, right? I don't want to worry about money. So you could be giving, could be getting some very good advice um, this week, right? You might have to pay for it. It might not be free, um, but it will help you out, right? It will very much help you out and help you kind of um, achieve what you set out to achieve there. But we do have the Seven of Cups here as well. Now, the Seven of Cups can bring in an energy of fantasy of using your imagination, um, but it can be where we do get a little bit overwhelmed and we get confused. We can also procrastinate a little bit in the Seven of Cups. You might have some options. You might have some choices to make this week, right? And quite often, I mean, if you look at the guy there, right he's got all of his little cups in his shell game and he's like oh man I don't know which one to choose I don't know which, which which direction and his imagination is running absolutely rampant in this energy right he's like well if I choose this cup what's underneath this cup is this money is this abundance is this growth is this the things that I want 
or am I going to like, you know, get bitten, right? We've got a poisonous snake coming out from one of them. We've got a bat wing coming out from the other. So if you're not looking for a bat, right, it's like, oh my goodness, I don't want this, right? And of course, nobody wants to be bit by a snake. So, you know, sometimes in that energy, we do feel um, like our head is just spinning and we quite often freeze in place with this, right? Now, it can be that something that you've been imagining is opening for you, right? Something is coming true for you or you have an opportunity to make something happen because it's aligned with what you are manifesting in your world that you it's up to you now, right? The universe is saying, I brought you something. I brought you people. I brought you situations. I brought you opportunities. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to sit there wrapped in fear? Are you going to worry about what the outcome is? Are you going to ignore your intuition? Are you going to get up in your head about it, right? Are you going to expect the worst? Because if you expect the worst and if you expect expect to pick this shell with the poisonous snake under it, it's probably what you're going to get, right? So we don't want to do that. We want to sit there and we want to go, okay, let's look at things practically. Let's get all of our information. Is this aligned? What does my intuition tell me, right? And what's the difference here? Am I afraid, of something real like is there something really to be afraid of or is it just something where I'm uncomfortable getting out of my comfort zone or I'm doubting my own abilities right so you might be very much in that energy a little bit of turmoil but I feel here with the king energy and the emperor energy you will either be getting some advice like I don't know what the hell to do help me right so you might be in that energy but this can also be you stepping into your own personal power and saying I'm not going to procrastinate anymore I'm not going to doubt myself I'm not going to be afraid of my decisions and the outcome I'm just going to make a decision and you know what if things work they work if they don't we'll revisit that and we'll re-strategize later on down the road and sometimes we just have to be in that energy and we've got to be in that decisive energy so you can have all kinds of things going on there but you could also be you could have be having a dream come true right and it's your time to shine it's your time to step forward but yes we do have the emperor bringing in um a sense of authority power control a sense of where you know hey my strategies paid off or your ability to recognize that you know what i need to be a little bit more flexible because i've got a plan in place but as all emperors know when we rule an empire sometimes we do need to be a little bit flexible with our strategies because sometimes even the best laid plans, <laughs> right? We sometimes do have a monkey wrench thrown in there, okay? So really embrace your personal power. I do see growth here. I do see success here. I do see taking charge, being committed to your journey. And I do see that your patience may pay off in a big way for you here as well. If you're looking for it's not really a new energy necessarily, not with the king and not with the emperor, um, but it is very masculine in its energy, right? The king is a masculine energy, the emperor, right? Aries energy, right? But it is masculine in its energy, taking initiative, taking action, taking control, taking charge, and, you know, propelling yourself forward in some direction. So don't doubt yourself on your journey. As I feel here that you will get things on track and you will make the right choice for yourself. And if not, huh, right, if you're doubting yourself still, there's people around you that can possibly help you. We have the temperance card coming in here as your advice from spirit. Number one, no matter what decisions that you're making, no matter what choices you're faced with, no matter what doubts you have or confusion you have, remember that not only there might be um, helpful people around you, Spirit's also helping you and protecting you and guiding you, right? We've always got our guardian angels around us. We've got our spiritual soul tribe, and they are helping you to manifest things into your world. The temperance card is Sagittarian energy, breaking free of patterns and cycles, breaking free of stagnation, bringing you a little bit of luck as well, okay? And um, with this energy, we're also balanced we're bringing in some calmer energy here and we're trusting in the guidance that we're receiving okay and this is also about spiritual alchemy right so you know this is something wonderful in your world that is manifesting and that spirit's helping you to materialize even if it's just a little bit of confidence um, in your life. So it's a great time for you to connect with spirit, especially if you're in this seven of cups energy where you're 
feeling a little bit stuck or you're like procrastinating or you maybe you're feeling a little bit fearful or hesitant and you're not sure why um, spirit can be not only can you have some people around you that can help you but spirit is also there as well protecting you guiding you and showing you the way so pay attention to your signs pay attention to your dreams and call in that energy of spirit to give you a little bit of extra confidence or guidance um, in your world but again we have to be open right, to receiving these messages or to be um, accepting of the advice that might be there for us, all right, whatever your situation is. But we do have abundance, we do have success, but it's all hinging on this Seven of Cups energy. But I think here the Temperance card is where we're balancing things out. If you've had some issues with people in your life, I think this is where maybe you'll get them some things back on track, okay, or at least you will just feel more grounded. We've got the two of swords. <laughs> Wonderful. We've got the two of swords coming in here for you. And this is blessings headed your way. So this is an energy that benefits you the most. If you are confused, you're doubtful, you're overwhelmed, you have to make a decision, you're unsure about what's going on. The two of swords in your blessings position is your ability to try go within, trust your intuition and make the right choices, the right decisions for yourself. Okay, it's also where you can get some clarity on a situation there. Sometimes when, we're, when we have the two of swords energy, we're confused, um, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And sometimes we're also seeing things in black and white. And it's like I have a decision to make in some way. And but I just don't know, right. So um, we can get sometimes feel a little bit overwhelmed. This is a breakthrough with this being in your blessings position. So getting that clarity, regaining that focus and ultimately making a choice uh, so that you can shake things up a little bit and that you can move forward in a great way. It's also about finding balance here as well. All right, balance is important. Temperance card, right? Um, that energy does bring you in some balance or helps you to recognize that you do need a little bit of balance in your life. And with the seven of cups, maybe you're trying to figure out how to make that happen, right? I'm committed to my work. I'm committed to my family. Um, maybe you're in charge of things, right? Or maybe you even have your own business and you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed here in that energy. And you're like, okay, I've got to find some more time to spend with myself, my family, or to do things that are good for me, do things that are fun. And so with the two of swords, you might be making a decision on how to do that, right? Because even if we give ourselves a little bit of relief, sometimes we think, oh, I need to cut off half of my commitments or and things. But what if you start with like 5% or 10%, right? And take back a little bit more of your time and just in small increments, right? Small increments, it's the little things that count and that add up um, in the end. So just try those little baby steps and you probably get to where you want to go. So I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please like, share, subscribe. Also, I am abundant in the comments down below if you want to enter to win a free personal reading. So I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I'll see you later. Bye. Hello, Gemini. Let's have a look and see what we've got for you guys in your week ahead. Messages for Gemini, please. Thank you. We have milk and honey. Well, Gemini, milk and honey in the land of milk and honey. All of our needs are met. We want for nothing. We have the resources that we're looking for. We have the help, support, and guidance that we're looking for. We have opportunities that we're looking for. Whatever it is, we've got abundance in your world this week with the milk and honey card. Love it, love it, love it. Of course, one of the favorite cards in the deck. All right. So anything is possible in the land of milk and honey. So some of you are reaping some rewards. Uh, some of you here are, um, you know, if you've been looking for something or you've been feeling lost, here you are, you're going to be finding um, those answers or you're really going to be um, feeling like, hey, I found what I was looking for. And hey, I was, you know, uh, I wanted, I needed a little bit of money to do this and voila, I found some, right? Whatever that happens to be for you you the milk and honey energy is wonderful ultimate abundance in your life and of course abundance doesn't necessarily mean money or material things it can be pretty much anything right it can be friendship it can be loyalty it can be commitments it can be happiness and joy it can be family it can be friends and whatever it is that you want it to be but in the land of milk and honey we want for nothing so beautiful energy giving you a little bit of peace of mind 
and it looks like here uh, that you need it, <laughs> okay? We do have the Five of Wands starting out your week, and the Five of Wands can represent a little bit of drama, um, you know, or a little bit of challenges, conflict with people in your life, um, some very passionate energy, okay? And But I feel like here that you're going to be resolving something, walking away from something, or just ultimately letting something go, okay? So with this Five of Wands, have you been battling with somebody, right? Are you in an inner in an energy in a situation where people should be working together, but instead maybe they are, um, you know, working apart from each other, right? So we might have the ability here with this five of wands to bring things back together. And, you know, normally we've got people battling with the wands. And in this particular card, right, we've got people working together and building like the corporate ladder and reaching this goal. Teamwork makes the dream work, people. So you might have the ability here to get people working together, right? And for a common cause, rather than everyone doing their own thing or everyone out for number one. But I feel if you are in a situation where everyone is looking out for number one with the hanged man energy, I feel that you're going to extract yourself from that situation. You're not going to get involved, okay? Or you are just going to be like water off a duck's back. I'm going to let it go. I just need to move forward. So I do feel some of you are looking for a career change, right? Especially if you're in an energy here in your workplace with the five of wands where people are battling, where there's a lot of drama, um, you know, where you're probably sitting there going, why the hell can't people just work together? I just don't get it, right? Everyone's looking out for their own needs. And with the hanged man, you're like... I think I'm done. I need to let this go. And the Knight of Pentacles, right? You might be on the quest to look for a new job, okay? To look for a new career. But you might also be the person, right? With this hanged man energy who can take a step back and who can really gain a little bit of understanding about the inner workings of something here, what makes people tick. And when you know what makes people tick or when you figure out what the issues are, when you look at things from everyone's point of view, boom, this is where you get that enlightenment. This is where you figure out, figure things out. It's where you get the answers, milk and honey, right? You know what you need to do in that situation or you know how to resolve something or you're just getting that deeper element of understanding and you're like, aha, now I know what to do or now I know what direction to head in. So this hanged man here, you may feel as though you're stuck in a situation and in which case I feel here you're going to, you know, figure out a way to move on. Okay. Or you are going to figure out here um, a way to gain a little bit more understanding and figure out how to resolve something, right? Because in that hanged man energy, we do turn things upside down. We do look at things from a different perspective. We have an open mind. We have an open heart, right? It's where we get a, a, our light bulb moments, right? A little bit of clarity on the situation where we do get that understanding, but it's ultimately also where we do surrender, sacrifice. We let things go and we release our blocks and obstacles in this too. Now, sometimes the hanged man, of course, requires a little bit of patience because we feel stuck. And for some of you here, I feel that if you've been feeling like you've been stuck in a situation, five of wands, that isn't necessarily wonderful for you, okay, then you're figuring out here how to move forward, right? So you're either going to resolve something this week, you're going to gain enlightenment this week, or you're going to open up some doors of opportunity and you're going to take some initiative and take some action here to make the steps forward that you need to make, right? Whatever it is, you're moving forward. So it's a little bit of a breakthrough for you or a breaking free energy for you. Um, you're going to feel a little bit better. You're going to feel a little bit lighter this week. And maybe you even feel like, you know, you've broken some stagnation that's been around there a little bit. Your patience may pay off for you here this week, all right? Um, but we do have the Knight of Pentacles. So this can be something coming in here for you. It can be an offer, an opportunity, an invitation, a gift. It can be some knowledge uh, that is given to you, right? Or that you find that you acquire and in the milk and honey, right? You're finding the resources that you need, whatever it looks like to you. But the Knight of Pentacles is also your energy. You're on a quest. You're on a journey. And that journey has to do with your pentacles, with your earth energy, with your material world. So your money, your resources. Um, and I feel here that 
If you've been waiting for something, I feel here that you may find what it is that you've been looking for, okay, especially with that milk and honey. So for example, if you've been like cooling your heels a little bit, biding your time to maybe make some moves in your career path, right? You want to make some more money. You want to work in a healthier environment. You're tired of struggling with that five of wands. You don't want the conflict. You don't want the drama. You don't want the backstabbing, all of that kind of stuff. And here you are. You've been very patient in the hanged man energy. And in the Knight of Pentacles, you are taking some action or you are finding what it is that you're looking for. So you might find that new job. Um, you may find like a recruiter, a career counselor or something, or you are making some moves and you're putting yourself out there and sending out some applications and things. And I feel like that if you've been biding your time, I feel like here it's probably the right time for you to do that, right? And you just never know. Um, you know, how something may work out for you. But these are all in the upright, right? Especially the Knight of Pentacles. So your due diligence pays off. Your patience pays off. Your ability to take things one day at a time and make the right moves one step at a time is going to pay off for you in a big way. So um, certainly a little bit of forward movement there with that. All right. Now, the Knight of Pentacles is also very slow energy, slowest night in the deck, right? And is very detail oriented, right? Um, has, you know, make sure the Knight of Pentacles is, is, you know, in this energy. You would be making sure that you're looking at the fine print of things. You're looking at the details. You're paying attention when we have the Knight of Pentacles. So I feel like if you are, um, looking to make some moves with your money, your career, even your relationships, right? Some of you might be breaking free, you might be moving forward, or you could possibly be resolving something here in a healthy way. But I feel like here in this energy, your diligence and your patience and your ability to look at the minutia of things um, and even sleep on something, right? All of this is really going to pay off for you. But some of you may be going on a journey that you've been waiting for for a while, or you are finding some money so that you can do what it is that you want. We've got the seven of pentacles here for you as your advice from spirit. Something is growing in your life, or this is a chance for you to grow and to move forward. When we have the seven of pentacles, this is spirit reminding you that there's a lot of things that quite often go beyond behind the scenes that you can't always see. And you might just be scratching the surface at something, um, but ultimately you've planted roots somewhere and now you are assessing your situation and going, okay, I've planted my roots, right? All of these roots down here. I see some growth. I see some possibilities, but I'm just needing to assess here in this situation. And do I still have an opportunity for growth here or do I need a different plan? Do I need to do something differently? So spirit says here that, you know, sometimes we do need to look beneath the surface. We do need to have a look and see what's really going on to see what our true potential really is um, or to see if we can resolve something or do something a little bit differently to get something back on track. Um, or this can be where, you know what, uh, you've grown as much as you can grow in your situation and maybe it is time to move forward. But whatever it is for you, taking the time to assess your situation and opening your mind, right, very much hanged man energy, right, will help you make a choice, make a decision. Do I stay? Do I go? Do I, you know, um, harvest what I've built so far, right? And, you know, do I try something new? Is there a different way that I can do things? So your patience and your ability to strategize, but also put a new strategy in place will very much pay off for you. The seven of pentacles can be one of abundance or harvesting, reaping what you've sown, right? So again, some of you may actually have some very positive things coming in for you this week and you've been waiting for a while, right? So you might get some sort of rewards um, for what you have accomplished so far. Um, but I do feel there is a very deep thinking kind of energy here for you guys this week as well. And we've got the six of cups here for you. And the Six of Cups is a blessing headed your way. So number one, your ability to focus on the here and the now and, you know, to really recognize how far you've come or recognize, um, you know, take stock in the moment, shall we say, because in the land of milk and honey, we are reminded to give thanks and be grateful and count our blessings in the here and the now. 
So this can be that energy for you. We sometimes get gifts in the Six of Cups. Okay. And again, we've got the Knight of Pentacles, which can sometimes be delivering us something, delivering us a gift or an opportunity or something like that. And so you might actually be getting a gift um, in your week ahead, some of you. But the Six of Cups as well as your ability to look on the past right to reflect a little bit and of course we do have the retrograde energy and of course mercury really does affect you gemini and so in this energy you might be reflecting on the past but you're seeing things for as they truly are because sometimes the six of cups we look on our past experiences with rose colored glasses and instead of rose colored glasses you have bifocals and you are seeing things crystal clear your eyesight's 2020 so we do sometimes need to reflect on our journey how far we've come what obstacles we've had what we've you know dealt with right and this puts us in an energy in our present moment of deeper understanding so that we can figure out where we're going from here what is my next steps what's my next move right and because you're seeing the truth of things and you're recognizing things um for where the way they really are this really does put you in the driver's seat this week right and it can be minor details it can be minor things or it can be something with the bigger picture here especially with that hanged man right you see the bigger picture all right but i do think that your patience is going to pay off for you now we can have a return with the six of cups also mercury retrograde can bring things out of the woodwork as well and but I feel in this energy that if something does come back in your life for you, this can be something where you can resolve something once and for all. All right. Especially if it's like people or family or some things like that or something's dredged up from the past. I feel here in this energy that your blessing may be to gain um, understanding, enlightenment and to let it go or you can figure out how to resolve something and move forward and have that second chance right? Because this can bring in that those second chances for things and it is a blessing. So something from your past in coming into your present is blessing for you, right? And remember, we've got blessings with the milk and honey. So whether this is a blessing of resolving things and letting it go, or having that embracing an opportunity that you thought previously was lost or that you've forgotten about, right? This is certainly moving you forward in a great better direction so i'm going to leave that there for you gemini that's what we've got for you this week hope there was something there for you if so please like share subscribe also i am abundant goes in the box down below subscribers only so make sure you are subscribed if you want to enter to win a free personal reading so thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys later hello there cancer let's have a look and see what we've got for you in your week ahead messages for cancer please and we've got soulmate energy coming out here for you guys. So this is lovely. So as we said at the beginning of this, uh, of this reading is that this is a week for you to focus on your relationships, make love, not war. Okay. So this might be an opportunity for you this week to slow things down a little bit and to spend some time with the people that you love. Okay, the people that have captured your heart in some way, your soulmates. Now, your soulmate, of course, can be a romantic partnership, but it can also represent family can be a soulmate, a friend can be a soulmate, right? Our soulmates come in many shapes and forms, and we have different relationships, different experiences with them um, in our lifetime, right? So we're connected at a soul level in some way. Sometimes a soulmate is just here to help teach us something right, to break us open in a way that we wouldn't normally have been open to, right, and it can teach us about about something about ourselves or something about life, but this can also be that connection that you have going forward for a very long time, right, a reason, a season, or a lifetime with those soulmates. So some of you this week might be meeting someone new, and as I say that, we've got the magician coming out there. Um, this can be where you're resolving something, by the way, with a soulmate as well, okay, or this is your opportunity to 
turn things around in a healthier way. Someone may help you as well. Okay. Um, maybe someone you can rely on can help you, right? We do have some heavy hitting energy for you. We've got the magician, we've got the devil, and we've got the ace of wands. So your soulmate, I think for some of you here, you may actually be calling in, attracting in a new love. Um, a soulmate. Okay. The magician manifesting things into your life, possibly a new person with the devil card here. It can very simply represent the Capricorn. Okay. Um, so for some of you, you are meeting someone new. They are Capricorn with the ace of wands. You've manifested this person into your life. Okay. And you have an instant attraction to them, a chemical attraction to them. And they are a soulmate. Now, with that devil card coming out there, okay, it can be a possibility that this might be something very short lived. So some of you might have a little bit of a summer fling <laughs> this week. Okay. And perhaps though, this is exactly what you need, right? The universe has sent you this person for a reason, right? There's your reason soulmate coming in there. Okay. Maybe they're here to teach you something about yourself. Maybe they're here to um, help you break a free of an old cycle, or maybe it's just really simply to, um, you know, wake you up, right? To, uh, to something, especially if, you know, it's a passionate fling and you've been single for a long time, or break the ice, so to speak. But some of you, yes, you're just meeting, um, a new person or dealing with a new person. It may or may not be romantic. So it can also be like business or it can be friends. And they are a Capricorn, plain and simple. Okay. But on another level with the magician and the devil card here, be careful. Okay. Um, this can be like snake oil salesman kind of energy. The magician is typically very positive, right? Especially in the upright, but the devil, not so much. So be aware this week and especially Mercury retrograde of someone trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Be aware if you're making any decisions and signing contracts or anything like that. Make sure you read the fine print. Someone might be glossing something over, right? And they don't want you to see something and they're creating a little bit of magic there so that you don't see what you're being dragged into or what you're being bound to. The devil card can bring in um, temptation. Come to me, right? I have exactly what you're looking for, right? And you might be saying in the ace of wands, I am not what you're looking for, right? So, you know, there could be something new that you want or that you've been thinking about and you might find what you're looking for, but there is an element of be careful, Okay, in this, right, because we can have a toxic salesperson, maybe someone puts a high pressure on you in some way, right, because you're excited and they can sense your excitement. Okay, so buying a car, right, you really want this car, it drives wonderfully, you know, you take it on a test drive, the salesman says, oh, drive it like you stole it, and you go be beeline and out of that parking lot, like, man, this is nice. Right. You get back and all of a sudden there's a million fine prints there and the sticker price is not exactly what you're going to pay. Right. So your payment terms, your interest rates, right. Your all of these things. Make sure you do an inspection if you're going to buy anything this week. Right. And it's not necessarily that it's something really negative or something really wrong, but it is something that you need to pay very close attention to. Okay, especially before giving, signing something away or committing to something because with the devil card, we're bound, we're attached, but not always in a healthy way, right? So make sure that there's an out clause, right? Don't back yourself into a corner this week and just be aware of people around you that might be trying to pull the wool over your eyes or manipulate you in some way, right? Because that devil card with that magician, they're working their magic on you. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, but I do feel here with the Ace of Wands, right, such a positive gift from spirit um, is that I think here that you're going to recognize. You're going to recognize if there's something negative. You're going to recognize if somebody is trying to trick you. You're going to recognize um, 
any kind of fine print or anything that you need to be aware of if you're making any purchases or anything like that, right? And I think that you're going to see that clearly and your third eye is open, right? So you got all this creative energy that's all around you, okay? And in this energy, we see things in our mind's eye, right? And we see the truth. So I think you might be figuring out the truth there. Okay, so just, uh, again, heads up for some of you. All right. But it can very well just be a, a you know, Capricorn person, like I said. Um, but I do feel here some of you as well are getting something um, or discovering something or recognizing something that you've been wanting and wishing for and waiting for and probably obsessing over. And, you know, so spirit number one says to you've got to trust all right, you've got to trust and you've got to let go of some obsession, right? You've got to keep things in perspective, put up some boundaries because you are attracting people into your life, people, situations, things, opportunities, whatever it happens to be. But there is a danger here with the devil card here of not keeping things in perspective or becoming obsessed, right? Something has a hold over you, something controlling you, right? So you have an opportunity here to break free and do things in a healthier way. I also feel some of you are breaking some bad habits this week. Okay, the magician, right? You got the resources that you need. You're feeling really creative. The devil card here, a hmm, little bit of a hiccup, right? And this is where you start to cave into your fears. You start to doubt yourself, right? Um, you know, you, how should we say, uh, you know, something you know, it has a hold on you in some way, right? Some obsessive kind of energy here, right? And, but with the new coming in with the Ace of Wands, right? Just be aware of blocking yourself from moving forward into trying something new or doing something new, okay? Um, because the devil can represent the resistance, right? Something's holding you back, okay? Something's got that hold over you, but there's beautiful new energy with the Ace of Wands, Okay, so if you're manifesting things in, remember boundaries and perspectives. We don't want to obsess. We want to let it go. Okay, you have the ability, you have the power to unchain yourself, unchain your mind, unchain your, unchain your energy. Okay, but I do feel here that some of you are very much trying to break free out of toxic cycles, out of bad habits, patterns, and behaviors. And here is this Ace of Wands. You recognize what you need to do, and boom, you are making an effort to do that. You have an opportunity to do that. So maybe you're simply looking at ways to eat better, go to the gym, exercise a little bit more, right? But you got a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. And this can be where a soulmate comes into play, right? Someone who has your best interests at heart. And they might be um, uh, very, um, very part of your solution. Okay, not part of the problem. They may also recognize something with that devil card there. If someone's trying to pull the wool over your eyes, or someone's trying to, you know, kind of gloss over something, you need to pay attention to. I feel like, um, you know, a soulmate for you there, right? A romantic partner, a friend business partner, something there, they may actually help you to see the truth and um, to avoid a situation there. They might have some very important advice for you, um, but they may speak to you harshly. All right. In that energy, sometimes, you know, sometimes we need uh, we need our soul tribe there. Sometimes we need them to kind of knock some sense into us a little bit. And we may be an, we may be annoyed right? We may be pissed off with what they have to say because they're telling us what we need to hear and not glossing it over to what we want to hear. All right. So anyway, whenever we get the devil card, we need boundaries and perspective, no matter what we're doing, whether it's something in our shadow self or whether it's something, um, you know, in a person or a situation that we're dealing with. So just make sure that you've got that. Take a step back, review, review, review all of your fine print and don't do anything impulsive. Okay. There's something here you may not be able to trust and you need to make sure that you know fully what you're getting into and get advice if you need to. We've got the Empress card coming in here as well for you. And this is your advice from spirit. A little bit of self-love, self-care will really benefit you this week. The Empress card does bring about um, some love and some romance, some happiness, some joy. So again, and it can bring new beginnings. So again, some of you here are um, meeting somebody new. And again, it can be very simply a Capricorn person or someone with Capricorn um, in their chart or maybe someone 
who you have been pining over, obsessing over, or maybe someone that is just completely irresistible, okay? And that can be blossoming in your life there. And the Empress card coming out here as your advice from Spirit is reminding you, uh, the Empress is ruled by Venus. Venus is in retrograde, as is Mercury. And so if you do start a fling of some kind, okay, it may be short-lived, right? Venus retrograde. Okay, it may be very short lived, but it's probably really fun uh, to be honest with you. A little bit, um, all, all style and no substance, right? Physical and not emotional. Okay, in that energy, if you get my drift. All right. But the Empress card is a perfect time to create. You feel like some of you do have something manifesting in your world, probably something that you've been very much focused on to the point of obsession. Okay, so remember, we do need to let that go so that we can let the energy come in freely. So I do think that spirit is saying here, yes, there's something that is trying to expand and blossom in your world here, but you got to get out of your own way or you got to get out of your own head and allow these things to come in here for you. But the Empress card brings in some creativity. The Ace of Wands brings in creativity and the Magician also brings in creativity as well. So this is your opportunity to really shift your focus to create things that you want or get creative and maybe even improve something here. OK, that has not been the way you wanted it to be. And it's been bothering you with that double card, right? Something's been bugging you. Something's been preying on your mind. So this is where you have a chance to make something better. OK, to revisit something, if you will. We've got the four of wands here as a blessing headed your way. This brings in stability, security. This is your 1111 card. We've got a huge, huge, huge element of manifestation that's coming in here. Okay. And, you know, or your ability here and spirit saying here to get out of your way because something is trying to come in. The four of wands is known as your 1111 card. So number one, what are you wishing for? What do you want to create? What new beginnings do you want here? Okay. But we've got to remember to get out of the way, right? We don't want to obsess. Okay, this is here as a warning, that double card. We don't want to obsess over our manifestations. We want to allow, okay, and we want to, you know, express thanks and gratitude and be open and ready to receive and not closed off um, there in that energy. But the Four of Wands does bring stability, security, also brings in a cause for celebration. So again, I think something that you've been worried about may result, may get resolved this week. Okay, or you do get something that you've been obsessing over. But the Four of Wands does bring in um, a good foundation, some strong roots. It brings in abundance and a higher level of commitment in some areas in your world here for this as well. It also brings parties parties and get togethers and family. So maybe you're attending a wedding or something or an anniversary party. There could be devil card there, a toxic person that you don't want to deal with. And I think here in this energy is that you have an ability here to either resolve a situation, put up some boundaries before you even walk in, right? Boundaries and perspective. Okay. Um, put up those boundaries before you walk in there. Okay. Um, and this way you can have a good time, right? Because this four of wands is in your blessings position. So it's the energy that benefits you the most. You might even resolve a situation with a person as well that you haven't had the healthiest relationship with, or you just accept them for who they are. And you just know that you need to keep your guard up when you're around them and you can't always trust everything that they say. Okay. So I do feel here that you've got a lot of positive things coming in, in your week, but we do have a side order of danger or heads up or mistrust or things like that with that devil card. So just be aware of that this week. I'm going to leave that there for you folks. I hope there was something here for you. Um, if so, like, share, subscribe, all of that wonderful stuff. Also, make sure you are subscribed. I am abundant down below is how you enter to win a free personal reading. So I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hello there, Leo. Let's have a look and see what we've got coming in for you guys in your week ahead. Messages for Leo, please. Nope. Thank you. And we have come to the edge. Get ready for something exciting. Spirit is encouraging you, okay, to prepare. The come to the edge energy represents that you're on the cusp of moving forward, of breaking out of something, breaking free from something, following your goals, your dreams, or doing something exciting. 
exciting here for you, but you may need to take a step forward. All right. You're being encouraged to take those steps forward or to get out of your comfort zone. Because of course, nothing wonderful or exciting ever happens in the comfort zone. Sometimes we do need to take a little bit of a leap of faith. We need to face our fears and have the courage to overcome our fears and take that initiative, take that step forward, do the thing that we're excited about that kind of freaks us out a little bit, right? It can be very something as simple as moving forward with a relationship. This can be um, expressing your emotions that maybe you wouldn't normally express. Um, this can be maybe taking a little bit of a risk somewhere in your life, right? Um, you know, hopefully not putting yourself in danger or anything like that. And of course, we've got the Knight of Cups coming in there um, for you guys. So I kind of figured that might. Um, and again, moving forward with a relationship. So for some of you here, um, that is where you're headed. But we do have the magician at the bottom of the deck. So whatever is going on in your world right now, you want it. This is something that you've created. This is something that you've manifested. You've attracted it in your life. So with the magician at the bottom, there's a little bit of underlying energy of you're finding what you're looking for, right? You're being resourceful, you're resourceful, you're being creative, but ultimately, right, you are harnessing all of your inner magic, the power of the universe to make something happen. And your efforts, you're being rewarded, things are working out for you. The Knight of Cups here can be a person in your life that you already know, or someone new that you're about to meet. So we also have the Ace of Pentacles here as well. So with the Knight of Cups, very romantic energy, one filled with love and friendship, possibly romance for some of you. And this Knight of Cups generally does bring you something. So this can be an expression of feelings, expression of emotion. This can be that somebody quite, maybe for some of you, you get some flowers. This can be a proposal or an invitation of some kind. Now, does the Knight of Cups have to be romantic? No. It does not. Okay. So this can be a friend saying, Hey, guess what? I've got this thing. I've got this, uh, you know, you want to go to a concert. There's someone coming, coming in and you might be deciding queen of swords, whether you can spend the money ace of pentacles. So maybe they have gotten some free gifts or something like that from their workplace. Maybe they won something on the radio and they're inviting you to go somewhere with them. So it can be very, very fun. Um, very exciting because the Knight of Cups does bring love and romance, a little bit of a dreamer energy. They also bring some fun um, into the mix as well, but a very happy kind of energy with the King of Cups. So whatever is coming in, whatever offers someone's got for you, whatever it is that you're looking for, it's very positive in its energy with this. So uh, I do feel that maybe for some of you, you got a little bit of a surprise this week something that you didn't quite expect or something that your intuition has been highlighting for you. All right. Especially with the queen of swords there. Okay. You've been seeing some signs or you've been kind of like, huh, something is going on here. I can't quite put my finger on it. And so you just might be getting what it is that you were wanting that you were hoping for there. The Ace of Pentacles can represent new beginnings, new opportunities, but it can also represent gifts. And quite often the Aces are gifts, right? And because it's something that we have wanted in our lives, something that we've created. But some of you may have an opportunity that's opening up for you here in this energy and you might need to make a very important decision and you might have a very important conversation. All right. Especially with the queen of swords here for you. This can be your energy, um, your thinking, your contemplating about things, your, you know, really tapping into the inner wisdom in your soul. You're trusting your intuition here. You're seeing things clearly, but you're ultimately making a decision and a very important one at that with the queen. Okay. But it feels like here you're also open to some conversation. Um, you know, and you know, perhaps you are recognizing some positive things in your life or you're recognizing what you want. All right. But you're being making a very important decision here or having that all important little chin wag with somebody. But the Queen of Swords with the Knight of Cups can also represent somebody, of course, that wants to talk to you 
Um, maybe they, again, with the Ace of Pentacles, they have an offer, a gift for you of some kind. Maybe they have an opportunity for you here because those aces, right? The aces quite often is an opportunity born out of a seed of potential, right? We've got the seed here. We're planting the seed. We're hoping that it's going to grow roots. So for some of you, you're harvesting something this week that you've previously manifested in your life. Others of you, this is something brand spanking shiny new that can really blossom and grow into your future. Um, but this can represent, of course, those material gifts. So this can be a job offer. This can be an offer from a friend. This can be a new romantic endeavor, perhaps. For some of you here, whatever it is, okay, you need to clearly decide, do I take that leap of faith? Do I have the courage to do something new or to get out of my comfort zone? Do I have the courage to take something to the next level, right? Whether it's the next level thing or whether it's something new, whatever it is, it's all positive for you, right? But it all hinges on your decision, right? Are you going to take that leap? Because you're ready, right? But sometimes we need to recognize what is holding us back. Your advice from spirit, the Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles <laughs> quite often is bringing you in some sort of opportunity, some sort of gift, something. It can be a higher level of commitment in a relationship. It can be something that you've been very patient and you've been waiting for for a long time. The Knight of Pentacles can be, I mean, you got two knights, right? So two knights does encourage you to move forward, right? The knights are always on a mission. They're always on a quest. They don't sit still. Even the Knight of Pentacles sometimes goes so slow, you'd think he was going backwards, but ultimately it is forward direction. So be committed to your journey. Figure out what it is that you want, what's going to make you happy, right? Knight of Cups, what do you want to create? Where do you see yourself going? What new thing do you want to start or where do you want to make improvements, right? And then step forward into your journey, Knight of Pentacles. Take things one day at a time, okay? No one says, no one says you have to, you know, do everything all in one day. Be patient and take your time, but pay attention to the details. Pay attention to the opportunities that are around you. And then ultimately, you're being very encouraged to get out of your comfort zone or to move forward. But again, you don't have to do everything all in one day, right? You can take things one day, one step at a time, and you will get to where you want to get to, okay? And, you know, it's really positive in this, in this energy, right? Some things do take time, though, all right? But with the night of, I also do think that you've been waiting for something for a while. Okay, and this can be where things are really coming into alignment for you. And there are things that you really do want. The Knight of Pentacles is a very long term committed kind of energy. So some of you are meeting a new friend, a new business partner, um, a new job, something where you're in it for the long term. They're in it for the long term. Okay, and you could have that opportunity coming in this week, or this is really where your intentions may lay, right? I want a relationship, right? That's going to go the distance. I want a job that's going to make me happy, Knight of Cups, something where I can, you know, really, um, you know, commit for that long term, make some money, have some growth, right? And then those knights, they always want to grow. They're always moving forward, right? So I think whatever it is that you're wanting this week, you have an opportunity to attain that, all right? And we've got a third knight coming out here for you. Ooh la la. Okay, the knight of wands is in your blessings position, okay? And this is the energy benefiting you the most. So number one, this first and foremost, your energy. Night, 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 quest, 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 move, 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 go for it. Okay, you're being very encouraged to go for something here. The Knight of Wands is you're passionate, you're engaged in something, and you're excited about it. Okay, so get excited about something here because I do think there's something in the air for you there, but you're very encouraged to take that leap to go for the gold. Okay, but the Knight of Wands can also represent... Um, a person, of course, the knights, I mean, you might have a very people-y week with three knights and a queen coming in here. Um, but I do, f I feel that it's more like one person kind of thing, or maybe two people at the most. All right. 
And this can be where you have an opportunity to go out and have some fun with friends. Uh, this can be, you know, a couple of friends, they invite you to a concert or a party or something like that. You could have, um, you know, something, some sort of business gathering in your workplace. And it's your opportunity to expand your horizons and meet people, do a little bit of networking. That's always beneficial down the road. You never know um, what resources you might need to tap into a little bit later on if you do get out there and meet new people. Okay, so you could have be meeting some new people this week having those gatherings and but with the nights the nights are bringing you confidence here as well be confident in your abilities to start something or to lead something to make some changes but with the knight of wands brings in some passion some fire some chemistry um but with the knight of cups whew, man oh man Things are getting hot in here, okay? So you might have something very much heating up within a relationship. Or if you're single, hold on to your hat because you decisions that you make this week can put you in alignment with a person, possibly a romantic interest that has this underlying energy of chemistry, rom um, you know, physical attraction and probably makes your heart pretty much like fly out of your chest a little bit there. So it can be very, very exciting in that energy. Now keep in mind that we do have Venus retrograde. So take things slow. Okay. Unless of course you just want a quick fling, but because we do have the ace of pentacles, because we've got that knight of cups, I think spirit saying here, you know, yes, your heart may be pounding out of your chest, but take things one day at a time, take things slow, because this can be something that can last long term for you. All right. And, um, you know, but it also can on the flip side, have a potential if you move too fast of fizzling out fairly quickly, right? Venus retrograde. So take things one step at a time, even though you may want to charge ahead into something, but I think it's something very exciting. Whatever your week is like for you, there's a little bit of buzz in the air for you. There's creativity, there's excitement, and there's just something here that I think is going to really, how should we say, put you in the driver's seat, but also really kind of make your, uh, how should we say, uh, get your adrenaline going, all right? Something exciting. Let me know what that is. So I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here for you. If so, like, share, subscribe, and also make sure you're subscribed and try I'm Abundant down below to be entered in the contest. So thank you for watching, guys. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you later. Hello, Virgo. Let's have a look and see what we've got for you guys in your week ahead. Messages for Virgo, please. And, ooh, look, we've got two. Hmm, okay. Um, happy birthday, by the way, Virgo. Um, we might have a rough start to your week, okay? Uh, let's see. We do have chaos and conflict uh, as card number 33, and we do also have orphaned, which is card number five. So some of you may be feeling a little bit... Um, you either need to find some alone time this week and extract yourself from the busy busyness and the chaos of the day to day. Um, you might need to find yourself a quiet space just to be calm, ground your energy and to reflect. And we quite often do feel this way um, when we're at our birthday season, right? You know, we talk a lot about, you know, the calendar new year, right? December 31st, January 1st. But in reality, it's our astrological new year that really uh, can have the greatest impact and set the stage for us um, for our year ahead, right? Um, but we do have <laughs> all of these planets that are starting to go into retrograde. So you might be feeling this energy a little bit. So you may very well benefit from finding some space and time for yourself to ground your energy, connect with the earth, or do a little bit of soul searching to figure out what, what you want to change in your life, right? You might be feeling a little bit left out um, at something in something in your week ahead. Um, or you're just feeling a little bit uncertain with the kind of chaos that's going around you. Some of you have something going on in your world that's really shaking things up 
a little bit with this energy. Not that I want to be doom and gloom or anything like that, but hey, we do have Mercury retrograde, so we can have um, chaos and conflict, right? We can have some communication issues. We can have some snafus there. Um, with the Venus retrograde at the same time, um, we can have, uh, you know, we can have and situations here that quickly can escalate, they can get out of hand, right? Um, you know, a simple, healthy debate can quickly turn uh, to the dark side, so to speak, right? We can take things the wrong way, or, you know, things can turn extra fiery and spicy very quickly, more than we wanted to, right? And then, you know, so now we've now we're now we're, you know, kind of dealt a hand that now we need to resolve something, we need to figure something out. So, could just be a little bit of a bumpy start um, uh, to your week. And then probably something that you really do need to resolve, you need to deal with in your week ahead. But I feel this is a lot to do with you, um, especially, um, especially with the orphaned card, right? You might be having a little bit of an identity crisis. Maybe you're figuring out that you don't belong somewhere and you're, you know, like, okay, I, I don't know if this is really good for me anymore. It can be a workplace you're in. It can be friendships that you're in. It could be an environment that you're in, relationships of all kinds, right? Things like that. And, you know, so a little bit of a, a crisis of faith maybe for some of you, or you're just trying to figure out where do I belong, right? And it's sometimes those energies that do come in right around our birthday time, right? Because we question everything. Okay. But there may be something here that's being shaken up this week and it may or may not be within your control. Um, you could be very much in control of shaking things up, right? You might be like in a situation with the orphaned energy, you know what? I'm tired of this. I don't want to be feeling this way. I'm not feeling good in this situation. And boom, we're going to shake things up a little bit. We're going to face some, something head on. We're going to deal with some things and it may create a little bit of chaos. But ultimately, when the dust settles, right, things will fall into place for us better than they were before, right? Doesn't necessarily mean loss. Okay, although for some of you, it may be where something is headed, either something's got to go or something's got to change, right? Whether it's internal or external with you, we've got the hanged man there for you. Death card, something's got to go or something's got to change. Wow. Okay, and we've got the three of wands there for you as well. When we get the hanged man, there could be something that's been lingering for a while, or maybe you've been feeling stuck. Okay, for a little bit, right? We do often, we do quite often feel stuck when we have the hanged man coming out here, right? And the thing is, is that we're not necessarily stuck, but it's an opportunity to take a step back and assess the situation, look at the big picture, see if we can see things from a different angle, a different point of view. And this is quite often where we get clarity, all right? But this is also where we can let things go. Surrender and sacrifice with the hanged man. Now, sometimes all we need to do is shake away the cobwebs, right? Shake the change out of our pockets so that we can get a little bit more in the flow and we can feel a little bit more positive about things, okay? Or we can recognize the potential and the things that we have around us that we can be thankful for, okay? But I do feel here that there is a little bit maybe of an ultimatum with something here, right? Something's got to go. Something's got to give, surrender, sacrifice, letting go, or something has to change. Either way, there's change ahead for you. We do have the death card coming in here for you. And of course, ruled by Pluto and Scorpio energy. So you might be dealing with a Scorpio person in your life, okay? Or you are just in this energy here where you are feeling the need that something's got to get shaken up, right? You need to maybe put an end to something or you need to approach something in a different way you might be feeling here as though you're changing right or that you've been going through some changes so maybe now is the time where you know you're kind of processing some things that have been going on and now you're like okay this is my path to growth because the death card can bring endings it can bring new beginnings, but ultimately brings in transformation and evolution, right? But quite often in order to recognize the things that need to change or need to evolve or recognize what changes have been going on and how they can benefit us, we sometimes do need to go down to the underworld. We do need to go to the dark side a little bit, right? And then we can come up. So I feel like here that some of you are coming alive. 
right about now, you've been in this energy. Ew, right? We don't like this energy. It's down. It's dark, right? But we do need to go and do our shadow work here in order for us to see the light, to see the potential or to gain the answers, right? To get that clear sense of direction. But there's things changing your world emotionally, physically, with relationships within you. Spiritual growth can be on the table with this, okay? Or that you're just navigating things in your life that have been changing or that need to. All right. But I do feel like here that there is some blocks that are being cleared for you. It might be, make you feel uncomfortable and you might need to make some very difficult decisions and you may need to let something go, right? Well, create the space and the time for yourself to take the step back with the hanged man, right? But ultimately what you're doing is you're clearing the path forward. Because we do have the Three of Wands coming in here. So for some of you here, um, on a very practical note, perhaps you've had some delays here and now you've got some travel plans that are changing, right? And so you might have had a trip booked or something like that, um, you know, or you need a vacation. <laughs> By the way, the Three of Wands can be an energy of travel right? And it's like, I've made these plans and now I'm ready to go. So some of you are making some travel plans, but I think some of you have experienced some travel delays and maybe you need to change something within your travel. Um, maybe you need to change your destination. Oof. Uh, some of you may have actually had a trip booked to Hawaii, uh, especially with the surfboard, right? On that. Um, absolutely devastating. What is happening on Maui right now? It's absolutely um, uh uh, we sold sold our sold our place there, but um, uh, last year. But um, Lahaina is just like my ultimate favorite destination. I love it. Um, but unfortunately, it's been decimated, right? As we all know. So perhaps there's been some. If you've had a trip booked to Hawaii, you probably need to do something a little bit different. Just let them rebuild. Let them let them have their time, right? It's not a time for a vacation on that island. So, you know, so you might have to change where you're going, right? Something like that. But you could have had some other travel delays or delays in movement as well here for yourself. But I do feel like here that some of you would desperately need a vacation. Okay. So, um, especially if you've been dealing with a bunch of stuff going on in your world, a quick getaway, will make you feel fresh, make you feel more alive um, than you have been previously. And whatever your situation is, though, with the three of wands, okay, you're ready to move forward. You're waiting for the right doors. You're waiting for the right opportunities. You know what you want. So sometimes this death card here and this hangman, you can be figuring out what it is that you want or figuring out what direction you want to go in. And boom, here you go, right? You're opening, you're open up, you're looking out into the future and you're ready for action with this um with this energy there so you're doing some inner work here i feel i mean it's pretty heavy for a weekly reading but i do feel like you're doing some inner work here or you're figuring some things out um on a deep level okay and but this is ultimately clearing the path for you to go forward the page of wands is here as your advice from spirit it's your time to shine Okay, get yourself out there, shine your light onto the world. It is your birthday month. Okay, we're heading into a new astrological year for you. What makes you feel alive? What makes you feel happy? What makes you feel excited? Where do you want to see growth and manifestation in your world? Because the Page of Wands is spirit saying to you, you can have everything that it is that you want, okay? But if you've been feeling down and left out and ignored and abandoned, orphaned, if you will, uh-uh, we're breaking out of that. We're breaking free out of that, okay? And we're doing some more exciting things. So some of you, I think here that you may have, you may be stepping into a true sense of who you are, okay? Or you, spirit is really saying that you have the ability to create what it is that you're looking for, what it is that you want. But I think you're also encouraged here with the page of wands to get out and have fun, 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 right? This energy here is probably not all that fun. This three of wands can be, okay? But this isn't all that fun either, right? So, you know, page of wands, go have fun, nurture your inner child. Your inner child is screaming for some attention, okay? So even if you are going through some changes in your world or you feel you need to change, remember, take a lighthearted approach at things 
And sometimes it just makes navigating things in our world a little bit easier, right? We look at things with, you know, with more positive energy. We look at things from a different angle, right? And, you know, when we take that lighthearted approach at things and we just trust in our ability to follow our path, and to make the right decisions for ourselves, things do get a little bit easier. But I also think here that with the Page of Wands, there may be some sort of information or news or something coming in that can give you a fresh start or open up the doors of possibility for you here, just like the Three of Wands. So heads up, okay? Heads up, and it might not be this week, right? But there's something that may be coming in here for you in the very near future, in the next few weeks, and I think probably the next three weeks. And I think here that's something that is really going to make you come alive and make you really happy. We've got the Seven of Cups here. <laughs> Shocking. Okay, the Seven of Cups uh, is a blessing for you. Okay, this is in your blessings position. Your ability to break free out of stagnation and procrastination. Your ability to face your fears. Your ability to make a choice and be good with the choices that you're making. Quite often in the Seven of Cups energy, we're fantasizing about something. We're dreaming about something. We're using our imagination. But we do sometimes get a little bit stuck in this, right? So I feel like the blessing is if you've been feeling stuck, you're going to have a breakthrough. If you've been feeling indecisive, I think you're going to make a better decision and you're going to figure out your new direction and your path forward. I think that if you've been afraid of something, you might be facing your fears right? Something is evolving for you in a very positive way with the Seven of Cups, okay? But also, I think here that if there's been something that you were looking forward to and dreaming of, let's say a vacation, and maybe something hasn't worked out, right? You maybe had to cancel or change your plans in some way. Um, I think here that things will work out for you in the end, right? Because this is a blessing for you. So something that was potentially negative um, or something that, you know, had to change, I think you're going to be making a different choice, right? But I think it will be working out for you, right? So it'll be something that's like really fun, right? And really good for you. So whatever it is, we are making a decision, we're facing our fears, we're embracing courage, and something is working out in the end for you guys here. So I'm going to leave all that there for you guys. I hope there was something here. If so, please like, share, subscribe. And if you are wanting to enter the contest to possibly win a free personal reading, like, subscribe, and I am abundant. It goes in the box down below. Hope you guys have a fantastic week. I thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later. Hello there, Libra. Welcome to your weekly reading. Let's see what is written in the cards for you guys. Messages for Libra, please. Thank you. We have, oh dear, we've got chaos and conflict. Okay, you're not the first sign to get this particular card. Okay, so there may be some underlying or overlaying uh, chaos, change, upheaval, something around you. Okay, also uh, pay very close attention to communication because there could be some conflict. Now, of course, that may have to do with Venus, uh, sorry, Mercury going retrograde. Well, at the same time as Venus, right? retrograde, mind you. So there might be some things going on in relationships there. Okay. So just be very aware of that. Um, you know, think before you speak, try not to be, uh, get engaged or embroiled in any kind of drama or anyone else's gossipy, maleficent kind of business. Okay. Um, so just a little bit of a heads up there for you. Now you might be feeling a little bit out of sorts this week as well. So this might not be anything external. This may be something internal within you. Okay. And remember, we do have uh, the energy around us reminding us to find balance, find harmony and make love, not war. So you might be, even though you might be feeling a little bit ornery, uh, even though you might be feeling as though you just want to like come out, you know, button heads with somebody cooler head shall prevail this week. So it's very important to remember, take that step back, right? It's always a great, uh, a great idea to count to three um, before responding to things, um, or even 10 or 100, if that's what you need to do. Um, because sometimes when we do just let our emotions, let our um, impulses get the better of us, then sometimes that is, um, you know, uh, why don't we say the path of no return? 
sometimes is where we can go with that. So just be a little bit aware, internal or external. There might be some things going on uh, that just do create that little bit of turbulence. So let's see what else we've got coming in here for you guys. Now this is, by the way, card number 33. Threes are about creation, teamwork, and collaboration, right? Um, and threes are also the basis for manifestation. And sometimes when we're attracting things into our life, it does require change. And sometimes we, you know, need to work with other people, resolve issues or conflicts when we're working with other people. Um, and perhaps this is something that you're learning this week here, Libra. Uh, learning to work with other people a little bit better, uh, especially we do have the eight, eight of pentacles and the eight of wands coming out there for you. So this could very well be a workplace thing for some of you. Um, and you just try, got to try and get, you know, everyone on the same page. So whether you're in charge of that or whether you're just kind of, you know, one of the, uh, one of the pawns, as we, as we will say, uh, in this, uh, in this situation, right? So working with other people might be a little bit of a challenge this week. All right. But again, cooler heads shall prevail. Take a time out. Think before you speak, right? That kind of thing and try not to get involved in any kind of gossipy energy, <laughs> right? Sometimes, sometimes we can't quite help ourselves, right? But card number 33 is master teacher number. So there might be something that you're learning this week, or perhaps you can guide and teach others through some changes, some uncertainty and some chaos that you can clean some things up. But I think you've got a fairly busy start to your week and probably carrying through most of your week. We've got the eight of wands and the eight of pentacles. So you're being very productive this week. You probably have a lot on your plate. The eight of wands, while it can be a exciting and electrifying energy it can also be that you got a lot to do and with the eight of pentacles you're rolling up your sleeves you're staying grounded and you're getting things done uh, you're very attentive to whatever it is that you need to accomplish this week and you're very focused in this energy as well so this can be really wonderful for you so we do have eight eight two eights coming here for you so being flexible and adaptable is going to be the key to your success Okay, and keeping your eye on the prize, focusing on your end game, focusing on your goals, what you need to accomplish uh, will really help you to get through this week and, you know, help you not get sidetracked. But the Eight of Wands can represent that there's some really positive communication uh, coming in. Now, it may be some communication that... Um, you know, creates work for you. Okay. Um, it's like here, uh, you know, your boss might show up, uh, show up and say, okay, hey, Susie quit over there. I know that you're capable of doing this or you used to do this job. I need you to take on this extra work or this extra project. And while you may not want to, um, it may actually give you some brownie points. Uh, in some way. So this can also be something at home, right? So you might feel that maybe someone has dumped something on you and it just, you know, rifles up your plans that you've had for uh, your week ahead. But ultimately, you are very strong and capable of getting things done. But I do feel that there is something here where you might be on the cusp of getting a reward, rewarded for your hard work, rewarded for your dedication, rewarded for your skills. And if you're not getting rewarded where you currently are right now, or if you're not getting recognized, then you might be contemplating two of swords. You might be contemplating moving on because the eight of wands can be one of movement right? Moving, right? This eight of pentacles here, right? She's sitting at a desk. She's creating things. She's working on things, right? And with that eight of wands and the two of swords coming here, you might be faced with a difficult decision of making some change in your world. Whether you're working, whether you're looking to change a committed relationship um, or whether you're looking to change your career or maybe something to do with your money, right? You may have an opportunity to move forward or make that positive change. And, but you need to decide yes or no, left or right. Some of you might have some options there. But we do have the two of swords here as well. So for some of you, you might be a little bit up in your head, but ultimately you are trying to make a very important decision. The two of swords is quite often where we do go inwards. We're trying, we're trusting our intuition. You don't necessarily need anyone else's input when we're in the two of swords. So if you have an important decision to make, um, it's up to you, right? It's up to you. Um, you have all of the wisdom and the knowledge that you need 
internally to make the right choice and to make the right decision on how to proceed, where to go, how to resolve things, right? You've got that within you. Um, but just did a little word to the wise because sometimes in the two of swords energy, we're very uh, indecisive. Okay. It's like, uh, I just don't know. And we feel a little bit, ugh. Uh, we feel that kind of uncomfortable energy within. And sometimes we need to remember um, not everything is black and white. Not everything is either this way or that way. We quite often can find the middle ground somewhere. We can quite often find a compromise and we can quite often operate in a gray area. I love operating in the gray area, especially if I'm at work or something uh, like that, because that's usually, um, that's usually where I'm most productive and where I can get things done. Uh, you know, and, um, of course, you know, you gotta know what you're doing a little bit, right? So some of you may uh, be finding that middle path or the path unseen, right? If we're faced with a turning left or turning right this way or that way, what about the road less traveled? What about the one in between there? So being a little bit adaptable, flexible and adaptable again is your key. But with the two of swords, you may also, especially with a very busy week, um, and a little bit of turbulence here with the two of swords, you might be trying to figure out how to, you can find more balance in your life. What can I cut out? What can I do differently to find that balance? Because ultimately the twos, we need balance and harmony. And in the two of swords, right, it's like I need that balance. So you might be trying to figure out some things that way. And I think you're going to figure out how to proceed, how to move forward. We've got the temperance card coming in as advice from spirit. So yes, some balance and harmony in your world is very much the order of the day and very much needed. Okay, the temperance card can show here that you have the ability to resolve situations in a healthy way and spirit really wants to remind you of that. Also wants to remind you of your power, your skill, spiritual alchemy here. You can magically make things happen. So there might be something that is resting on your shoulders this week, but you're the chosen one. You're the one that can get things done because you have an innate sensitivity and sensibilities around you that maybe other people don't possess. So again, you might be the one that is resolving issues, that's getting people working together, and that's ultimately bringing some productivity to the table. And you might sometimes you know, be a little bit wrapped up in your head or a little bit uncertain what steps to take or how to deal with something, but ultimately your intuition will guide you and show you the way. The temperance card is also a reminder here that whatever you've got going on, okay, a little bit of spiritual practice may very much help you. This is a guardian angel card for me a lot of the times. Um, and whether it's your guardian angel, your spirit guide, past loved ones, you are being watched, you are being protected, and you are being looked over. So when you're feeling a little bit um, chaotic in your energy or when you're feeling a little bit uncertain or you don't know which, which direction, which path to take, to find a little bit of space and time to connect, right, with your, uh, with the universe, right, with, you know, your spiritual soul tribe there and ask for a sign, ask for some help and guidance and you will very much get it. Um, remember they work in mysterious ways. So this may come in in the version of repeating numbers. We do have 33 and we also have 88 coming out here. So repeating numbers is quite often a way, but you might see some other signs and synchronicities. I quite often do find messages in the clouds. Uh, and if you're, so if you're a stargazer or a cloud gazer there, that's where you might find the sign, um, that you're looking for. And they're usually quite profound. Um, the last major sign that I had a couple of weeks back was, well, just kind of like the temperance card here, beautiful angel wings in the sky. And I had asked for a sign for something. Um, I was actually working with Archangel Michael at the time and I got that sign crystal clear, clear as day. Like there was no mistaking that, right? So ask for that sign and you will get that. So pay attention there. But we do have the queen of wands here as a blessing headed your way. So this can very much be your energy, right? You're like, I'm not going to take something lying down. I'm not going to let anything derail me and my confidence. And I am going to take charge. The queen of wands is a very 
um, confident energy and no messing around, but it's like a magical leader. So you have the ability to have people leading you or not leading you. Um, you have the magical ability to lead people, right? And have them follow you. You can motivate people in a positive way and you can get people working. So in the queen of wands energy, right? You've got a lot of magic and you've got a lot of influence over people, right? Cause it's just, you bring a little bit of excitement to the table. Um, you can help people help see, help people see things in a different way. Um, but you're passionate right in this energy you're not just coming in here and throwing down the iron hammer and saying this is the way because the queens are open and flexible right they're ready to hear what someone has to say they're ready to listen to what other people's opinions are um and then the queen can magically bring something together right and figure out that solution so this can be your energy and it is a blessing for you here so whatever you've got going on this week be confident and believe in yourself but the queen of wands may also be somebody that you can partner up with someone that um, maybe uh, brings a little bit of fun into your life maybe they bring some motivation to you uh, especially if you're feeling a little bit uncertain about things this can be like quite often the queen of wands is a best friend energy so there might be a friend a confidant someone around you that can give you that little pep talk or that can remind you okay um, exactly how skilled that you are at things right and how capable and adaptable you really are so this might actually also be somebody that you're you know making amends with or finding common ground with here as well okay but as that blessing you are getting things done and resolving things in a healthy way so I'm going to leave all that there for you Libra I hope there was something here for you if so please like share subscribe all that wonderful stuff and if you are interested in entering the contest subscribe to the channel like this video and I am abundant it goes in the box down below and and good luck to you all. And we're going to move on now to Scorpio. Hello there, Scorpio. Let's have a look and see what we've got for your week ahead. Messages for Scorpio, please. Thank you. We've got the co-create energy. Now we've had this for a couple of people. So this is a wonderful energy here reminding you that you're always in partnership with the universe. You're always in partnership with spirit and you are co-creating your reality and manifesting things into your world together. There is something blossoming here. We've got this egg in this deck. Whenever we see an egg, there's something new or some improvements that are coming in your life. And it's something that you want, something that you have attracted towards you. However, we do need to be a little bit patient here in this energy. You see our little cheetah there, right? Sitting there going, okay, come on, you know, I'm kind of waiting here. But the wisdom that the cheetah has says, just be open, watch for signs, be open to opportunity and get ready for action. So in this energy here, partnerships might be highlighted for you this week. Um, you, this is where some doors might be opening for you this week. And it may come in a form of a conversation. It may just come in the form of releasing some blogs or maybe you're just feeling like you really have things back on track if you've been feeling a little bit topsy-turvy lately all right but when we do have the co-create energy this is just spirit really saying to you that i've got some things that i'm working on in the background you can start to see or feel things start to shift for yourself and just be open to some change be flexible for things but ultimately be ready for action to take some sort of initiative and seize the moment in some opportunities it can just be a very very much a conversation with somebody right your opportunity to just slide some um very positive words in there uh this can be you know if you happen to be looking for a job or something, right? You might just open the want ads or open your search engine, or you might have a conversation with somebody that can lead you down the garden path of prosperity and wealth and abundance, right? So when we're open to things, this is where the magic really does happen, but we have to be willing to take some action there. Okay. And, uh, you know, like, for example, we'll go back to looking for a job, right? Because a lot of you are, um, you know, worried about the economy and about your paycheck, things have gotten astronomically expensive. It's like highway robbery. In a lot of cases, there's just really no clear explanation for any of it. But anyway, um, other than sticking it to the sticking it to the people,
people. Um, but in this, uh, in this energy here, if you are looking for a job, right, you do need to initiate something, right? You need to start looking. You need to, you know, um, create a search. You need to update your resume. Okay. Or you need to let people know that you're looking for a job. You need to put yourself out there. So, you know, why are you taking that action? Then spirits like, okay, yes, Scorpio is ready. We have the Seven of Swords, the Devil, and the Six of Swords. Okay. The Seven of Swords and the Devil, there is something here that is not what it seems, and you need to be very cautious. Now, this can be just your energy, okay? Um, especially with the co-create energy, you might be obsessing over something, or you might be doubting your path and doubting your powers to manifest and attract things to you. So be very careful of that energy, okay? Because the devil is something where we're bound, where we're tied, we're obsessed about things, right? We go to the dark side a little bit, the seven of swords, we feel like we can't trust something or we feel that something is betraying us. Now this can be your own energy, right? You're starting to fear things, you're starting to doubt things, you're not trusting yourself, Okay, you're doubting the process of whatever you've got going on in your world. All right. So just be very aware of that energy. We do have a release of that energy. We've got moving forward from that. So that's a good thing, right? But whenever we do have the devil card showing up in your reading, boundaries and perspectives are needed. And this is first and foremost, your shadow side. Okay, the things in your life or your own energy, your thoughts that can quickly take a turn to the negative, especially coupled up there with that seven of swords. Okay, so trust yourself, try and stay positive, be open, be flexible, be adaptable, and ultimately boundaries and perspectives, even from yourself, is necessary, right? To see things in a more positive light, to have that positive focus and outlook, even if you feel like things are working against you. Sometimes, you know, the thing is, it can be very hard to stay positive sometimes, right? But ultimately, the power of positive thinking doesn't mean that everything's going to go your way always here the way you want it to. But the power of positive thinking is bringing in a different energy on how you face things in your day, your week, your month, your year right? So the power of positive thinking is very important. But in this energy as well, okay, there's something here you can't trust. There's a toxic person. There's someone that is a backstabber or someone that is trying to wheedle their way back into your life. And of course, we do have Mercury retrograde. And with the seven of swords, phew, right? The retrograde energy can bring surprises. It can bring sneaky deaky people back into your world. Um, it can bring in conflict and uncertainty and all of those wonderful things, right? And so with that devil, there's just something that you do need to be aware of or just keep your wits about you. All right. Um, but yes, there can be something coming back into your life. There can be a recurring argument. There can be a person that tries to come back in and they're like, oh, no, no, I've changed. I'm a different person. Uh, yeah, no, they're not. Right. So sometimes we do need to really trust our intuition. We always need to trust our intuition. But I feel here in this energy, it's going to be very important. Right. If something seems wrong, if something seems off, trust that. Right. Don't go and accuse people of anything or anything like that. But you really do need to trust your senses and trust your energies. All right. But the devil card can just be that you're getting obsessed over something here and what's happening is you're creating obstacles there. You're creating some resistance. So we don't want to do that. We want to cut those ties, right? We want to let something go. And we do have the six of swords here. So um, if you are trying to manifest things into your world and you're doing all the things right, you're doing candle work or you're setting intentions, you're working with the moon cycles, you've got crystals all around you, right? All of that. Okay. And you might just be kind of going, it's just not working. I'm just going to give up, right? No, no, don't give up, right? Remember the co-create card, right? Spirits heard you. The universe has heard you. So, but when we go down that rabbit hole of negativity or uncertainty or fear or doubt or um, impatience, mm -hmm, right, then we can create this resistance and we don't want to do that. You have the ability here. The devil card always reminds you that whatever is keeping you tangled up in knots, whatever has a hold over you, you have the power to release. 
You have the power to walk away. You have the power to let go, right? There could also be someone around you that's trying to control you, manipulate you, or take your power away, right? So here I think there is an... You may or may not be able to resolve this with somebody. You may just need to turn your back and walk away. Because we do have the six of swords coming in here. So whatever this, whatever this energy is for you in particular, the six of swords shows that you've got some troubles that you're dealing with. You've got some difficulties, but you are moving forward. You're making the right choices for yourself to find peace, to find calm, to find a better direction, to find a, um, resolution that's good for you that makes you feel good in this right the six of swords is a card of protection so um remember you're always guided you're always protected so if you are wrapped up in fears or if you're you know maybe trying to create some better habits or you're dealing with some challenging people that kind of thing right ask for that protection and guidance from spirit and you will get it and they will help you to show you the path forward in a positive way. But when we do have the six of swords, this can be a rite of passage. This can also just be movement. Okay. So if you're in a challenging, toxic situation, right, you can't put your trust in anybody, right, then this is showing you that change and moving away from that situation or that person may be your key to success, right, to find that inner peace, that outer peace, that harmony and that balance, right, and remember part of the theme that we've got, we've got Mercury retrograde, we've got Venus retrograde, and part of this energy here is to make peace, make love, not war, and sometimes we just need to walk away from something, whether it's temporary or whether it's permanent, because the devil card doesn't have to be like a permanent situation. It can be just a situational thing that you're dealing with one instance. And it's like, uh, uh, I'm not playing that game. I'm turning my back. I'm finding a better way. I'm just not going to get involved. So you just might not be getting involved and that might be your path forward to something a little bit healthier for yourself. Okay. So interesting things always go on when we do have that devil card. So just a little bit of a heads up for you. Um, but something may be very tempting for you this week and quite the devil card also does indicate our bad habits. So you might be beating yourself up. Maybe you're on like a exercise kick or you're trying to stick to a better diet, a healthier lifestyle, that kind of thing. And you might be beating yourself up this week because maybe you've fallen off the bandwagon. You've given in to that temptation that the devil card brings in. So, you know, maybe you had that piece of cake and now you're like kicking yourself in the butt for doing that. Or maybe you skip the gym a few, a few days because you're just tired, right? And, um, you know, spirit says here, don't worry, let it go. You're human. It's your human side coming to play. You're human. Let it go and then get back on track. Okay. Your advice from spirit with the three of pentacles. Okay. So this might be a peopley week for you. The three of pentacles can be teamwork and collaboration. So in this energy with that devil card, there may be someone that you are working with. Um, or that you're collaborating with and they might be causing some issues. Okay. You might also be working with people to resolve some issues here, right? It could be a very challenging situation that you're dealing with and you need help and support for, you know, to resolve it, to move past it, to get things done. It can be your workplace, right? Something in your home, whatever that happens to be for you, but you may not necessarily need to tackle something alone. So there might be some support that you can have in there. And with that being teamwork, collaboration, um, brainstorming, right? Um, the spirit says here, you can get things done or you can get things back on track, but you may not be able to do everything by yourself. And so this is where reaching out or recruiting people to help you can really benefit you. Okay. Um, you, there may also be something that you don't know. And with the three of pentacles, this can be an element of learning or teaching of guiding or being led. So depending on your situation, right, you might need to be stepping, you might, know, you might need to be the one that steps up to the plate. You might need to teach someone. Maybe you need to teach someone how to treat you, right? It can be something as simple as that, but you could be the leader, the guide, the teacher, or you could also be the one 
one seeking the leadership, the guidance, right, the knowledge that someone else may have, right? So think of, you know, if you are trying to, you know, have a healthier lifestyle, get to the gym, get more physically active, well, maybe a team, a team or group event. Right. Maybe some group yoga or a Zumba class, or maybe you want to seek out a personal trainer, right? That kind of thing can come in there with that, but you might not necessarily need to go it alone. All right. Um, so spirit wants to let you know that, right? You are very independent and, you know, sometimes, you know, you carry some weight of the world on your shoulders there, Scorpio, right? But sometimes, you know, divide to conquer. Okay. That might be your path to success. We've got the Six of Cups coming in here now. This is a blessing headed your way, okay? But the Six of Cups, yes, can be a return card, right? It can be something or someone coming back from the past into your present moment. You might need to make a decision. Can I let this go? Can I resolve this situation? Do I want this in my life or do I need to move forward, right? So do I stay? Do I go? Do I carry this with me? Okay, or this is this part of my future. Now with that six of cups being in your blessing position, the energy benefiting you the most, okay, this can be where if something does come back up from the past, whether it's a conversation, an argument, a person, an opportunity, whatever it happens to be, an old work colleague maybe, okay, whatever that happens to be, the benefit to you is to be able to either cut the cords, cut the ties, um, take control, take charge of the situation, or walk away, right? So the choice is yours, right? In this present moment, you hold that power. Um, and this way, they no longer have any power or control or anything like that over you. It's like a resolution once and for all. But also the blessing for you here with the Six of Cups, it could be something that you want, right? Something you, that you want may come into your life. And maybe it's something that you've been pining about, you've been obsessing over, maybe something you've been trying to attract into your life. Okay, and uh, this can be where something magical kind of does happen, right? You might get a second chance at something. But the Six of Cups is your ability to have fun, right? Feed your inner child, okay? To let go of negativities or doubts or fears, get out there, have a little bit of a good time, focus on the present as well in the here and the now is where the magic happens, is where you can resolve things, is where you can make change, okay? Right here, right now in that present focus is a blessing for you. Um, but I also do feel that some of you are getting a gift. So it's a gift of help, of support, of knowledge, of wisdom, of guidance, whatever it happens to be, or the gift that's coming to you is that confidence rather than fear, the ability to take control in a healthy way rather than being controlled in a negative way. So the Six of Cups can be a very magical card in itself. It can also represent children, companionship, friendship, and of course, those little gifts that we do get along the way but it's all about the present in this present moment in this present time right we look to the future okay or we make some decisions that lead us towards our future in a wonderfully happy way so I'm going to leave that there for you guys I hope there was something here for you if so please like share subscribe also if you're entering the contest don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel and I am abundant goes in the comment section down below and then you'll be entered so I thank you for watching have a wonderful week and I'll see you later hello there Sagittarius let's have a look and see Woo! thank you what we've got for you guys in your week ahead so we're kicking things off in a really great way here Saggy we've got new life you have something new this week now this could be that you're embarking on a new journey this can be where you're just sprucing things up a little bit because the new doesn't have to be brand new it can be new to you um, or it can be those improvements we're waking up to a better way um, a healthier way a happy way whatever it happens to be some of you do have something new that you're embracing or starting this week so this can be a new outlook on life and this can be a new way of thinking um, this can be a new opportunity, a door opening for you, or this can be something that you already know about. And today is the day you're embarking on that new life, that new journey, whatever it happens to be to you, right? This brings in a fresh energy, um, a burst of positivity and some really beautiful vibes. Okay. Now it may require change. Hmm, right. Anytime we have something new, this may require change on your part, but there is something new available to you. 
Now, you could be doing something as simply as changing your home environment around, right? Maybe you can't move to a new house or maybe you're feeling a little bit closed in and cluttered and there's things that you can do to make your current living arrangement um, more bright and shiny. Maybe you declutter, maybe you rearrange your furniture, maybe you get like a slip cover for your couch or something, right? Something a little bit creative you might get for yourself. All right. But whatever it is, I think that you are making some very positive change in your life. Woo, man. And look what we have here for you. We have the Empress card. We've got the devil and we have the Ace of Pentacles. So we do have something new. So for some of you, you're transitioning this week from a difficult, challenging, negative situation and you have a door of opportunity opening for you um, or you've got a new uh, as something new being presented or gifted to you. All right. This is a little bit of a reminder for some of you that you might need to keep perspectives and boundaries. Okay. Um, and that someone might not necessarily be in your court this week um, with that double card there. So but we'll start with the Empress, shall we? The Empress card ruled by Venus, who is in retrograde um, at the moment, by the way. OK, so there could be something going on in a relationship, right, where maybe um, in a relationship with someone, a friendship, a romantic partnership, business relationship, whatever that happens to be right? There's a new way of dealing with this thing because maybe there's been some struggles, some obstacles there. There's been some challenges. There's been arguments, um, things like that, right? And Venus retrograde in Leo can bring that, right? Because it brings passionate energy um, out into the open. But unfortunately, with that passion, right, with that retrograde there, it can be something that really does escalate quite quickly, um, so you might be resolving some issues there. Or you might be dealing with a person or something in a better way, um, dealing with a relationship in a better way. For some of you, you're going to move on. For some of you, you're going to really commit and knuckle down and resolve your situation. And with the Empress card coming in here, you might need to get creative. You might need to be um, ground and center your energy before dealing with something. OK, but ultimately you may very much embrace the energy that love is going to overpower and conquer anything. Love is the highest vibration of all. Love is very much, um, very much part of that Empress energy and love and light conquer this dark and shadow. Okay. So, um, finding that you're not going to tame the beast with anger with frustration. We're going to tame the beast with light, with love, with positive vibes, and in some cases by just letting it go and walking away, right? Recognizing the things that we can change and also recognizing the things that we can't, right? So for some of you, you're going to let bygones be bygones. You're going to, you know, say, okay, I can't change this. I'm going to accept it and I'm going to move forward. I'm going to deal with things a little bit differently, right? But for others of you, you're like, hey, uh -uh, no way, Jose, I got to let this go and I got to make positive change. I'm ready for something new. But the Empress brings in creativity. It does bring in the birth of new beginnings. It can also be a time of harvest, right? We're harvesting abundance in our lives. And this could be something that you've been um, wanting very desperately. Um, you might even be obsessing over something here because the devil card can represent obsession or temptation, right? And we've kind of been feeling um, in this energy like, you know, we can't move forward unless we get this thing or unless this manifests in our life, right? So with the ace of pentacles here, this could be something that you've been desperately wanting. Um, and now it's here. But whenever we do get the devil card, though, there is like uh, just something to be a little bit aware of here. Now, for example, if you're looking for a new job, right, you might get that phone call. You might find that new job opportunity, better ways to make money. But there's a dark side to it, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that it's, um, you know, going to be completely negative, but there are probably challenges, right? And, you know, a real world experience. Last year, I started a new muggle job, a day job for myself, right? And it's something where I really was focused more on, you know, money, 
right? So this can be a financial gain for you here, but there's maybe not a lot else that's kind of keeping, you know, like that super duper positive about it. So you probably have your challenges, right? A heavy workload or maybe people not playing nice in the sandbox, that kind of thing, but the paycheck could be very much worth it, right? Because the devil card can represent our focus on our material world. And with the ace of pentacles, our material world, and we've got the empress, we've got abundance flowing in right and you know and that's perfectly okay right we do sometimes need to make those choices we do sometimes need to just focus on the money it's like I would love I would prefer you know to absolutely love and adore at the job that I do every single day but you know what sometimes we need to recognize that you know certain things are uh, we need to find that compromise right and it's like okay I might not get all the fulfillment from my day job it's not all bad but I do have to deal with some very challenging situations sometimes um, but the paycheck's worth it okay so some of you may have this opening up for you um, in your week ahead but I do think that there's maybe something here um, that is really positive it's got some challenging undertones to it with that devil card, um, but ultimately it's what you want with that ace of pentacles, right? It's this opportunity, this door that's opening for you. All right. So, um, you know, so we've got like huge positive, right? And then we've got kind of a challenge there, a negative energy with that devil card. Okay. And we've got that ace, which is really positive too. Now the devil card can represent your fears. So there might be something new that you've got blossoming here, right? Either something is expanding, something's growing, or it's something brand shiny new, but there's fear element here with the double card, right? Your shadow side comes to the surface. So this is a reminder always with the devil card that we all have the shadow side. We all have fears, doubts, worries, anxieties. We all have, you know, anger in us. We all have things that we obsess over a little bit, right? And the thing is, we're always reminded with the devil card that you have the power to unlock that. You have the power to release yourself from that energy by how? facing fear, looking at the positive things instead of the negative things, right? Focusing on the things that you want to create and, you know, maybe even making positive changes to let some things go that you don't want in your life, right? But whatever it is, you have that power. Take your power back. OK, um, boundaries and perspectives are always necessary with the devil card. So there might be something in your world here where it's not all bad. OK, but you do need to put those boundaries in place so that someone doesn't undermine you. Someone doesn't overstep their boundaries. Right. Boundaries are healthy. Boundaries are good. But I do feel that some of you um, have something coming in that you have been very focused on. And it might be super positive with the Ace of Pentacles, but it may also represent a little bit of a challenge or some uncertainty that comes with it. Fear of success, fear of failure, fear of change, you know, that kind of thing, right? Or what if something doesn't work out the way that I really want it to? All right. Um, with the devil card coming in, we can't ignore the fact that it is quite often related to pregnancy. Um, so perhaps some of you are having some discussions with a significant other about starting a family or adding to your family. Um, or you may actually have some really good news. OK, you might actually be, you know, uh, discovering that you are pregnant. And even though maybe you've really wanted it, there's also a fear factor there. But it is ultimately very positive for you. Um, with that ace of pentacles and now you're on a journey of growth with that okay but I do feel that we have a big opportunity here in this week ahead to turn a negative into a positive however that looks like to you whether that may requires making physical change whether that requires facing something head-on that's maybe you know been bothering you or worrying you or keeping you stuck for a while and there's a better way forward with that ace of pentacles you may also have a little bit of luck on your side by the way um because the ace of pentacles aces are gifts from the universe and with the ace of pentacles this can be yes your money your finances your material world but this can also represent a little bit of luck on your side that ultimately does put you on the path to growth prosperity and abundance the nine of wands is here is your advice from spirit Hey, um, be very aware of your own energy this week because the nine of wands, number one, can represent a little bit of skeptical energy. Okay, so part of spirit's 
um, message here for you is number one, put up some healthy boundaries, right? Boundaries are good. This woman here is behind that wall and behind that little pickety fence kind of thing, right? And it's like, I'm going to let the good in and keep the bad out. Boundaries and perspective, the devil card, right? But this is also about keeping your wits about you a little bit. You might be skeptical about something and you might have a good reason for it. Right. So ask the right questions or, you know, make that decision, make that choice. It's like, OK, this is a really positive thing, but there's, you know, maybe more work than I wanted or, you know, something that, you know, I didn't quite uh, I didn't quite bargain for. But ultimately, I'm going to see the good out of things. Right. So a little bit of skepticism isn't a bad thing. But the nine of wands is about protecting your energy as well or replenishing your energy. So in this energy here, Ace of Pentacles and the Devil card. Right. In this energy, you might be very much working very hard this week. You might have a heavy workload um, and this can create that devil card. Right. Is that workaholic kind of um, kind of energy. So whatever you're trying to do, we don't want to, you know, get in that workaholic mode. Remember to try and find some time for self-love, self-care, because the Empress card can be about taking care of your own needs as well. And the nine of wands brings in an energy of tiredness of wounds. Right. Um, you know, needing you need that rest and relaxation. So you might be dealing with, let's say, a, you know, a, a challenging boss. Right. And he's like, well, I don't need sleep. So why should you need sleep? Right. Uh, yeah, nobody. We all need sleep. Thank you very much. So, you know, I don't own the company you do. Um, I'm going home. Right. You know, that kind of thing. So, again, those again, those boundaries really do come into play. But remember to take care of your own energy. And here you go. We've got some luck and some positive change. We've got the Wheel of Fortune coming out for you. So things are moving forward for you. But um, whenever we do get the Wheel of Fortune, yes, it's positive. This brings in um, some growth. This brings in expansion. This brings in some good luck, some good fortune for you. This is a time of positive things um, happening and flowing to you and coming into your life wonderful and this might be your opportunity here that's opening up to break out of this cha negative situation or challenging people in your life but this can also be an opportunity here for you to maybe resolve something and you know to get what it is you've been really wanting right but there is of course maybe some change that is required for you because the wheel of fortune is that change in cycle moving you forward okay but it does sometimes bring a little bit of turbulence and that can be that devil card there also that comes out with that right it's like ugh, feeling very uncomfortable feeling a little bit anxious right so um you know sometimes the really good things that are blossoming in our life do just have that underlying element but the wheel of fortune is a card of destiny okay so it, you're like you're on your destined path the universe is moving you forward to exactly where you are supposed to be and trust in your journey and trust whatever bumps in the road you're hitting, right? This is meant for you. Okay. So, but it is all very positive for you, but we do have, yes, some positive change, some growth, some very great experiences here with that wheel of fortune and yeah, a little bit of luck on your side. I love that that's come out for you, Saggy. And of course the wheel of fortune is ruled by Jupiter right and jupiter is your ruling uh, is your ruling planet okay so expansion growth wisdom all of these things maybe even wisdom to avoid uh situations or people that are not healthy for you right you're finding a better way forward making better choices so i'm going to leave that there for you guys i hope there was something here for you if so like share subscribe all that wonderful stuff and if you're entering the contest to win a free personal reading like this video subscribe to the channel and of course leave the comment i am abundant down below but i hope you guys have a wonderful week and good luck Hello there, Capricorn. Let's have a look and see what we've got for you in your week ahead. Week ahead for Capricorn, please. Thank you very much. Oh, look, and we've got two. Okay. So we have the orphaned card coming out, and we also have co-create coming out for you here. All right. Some of you are maybe feeling a little bit lost, a little bit broken, a little bit left out. Maybe you're feeling like something's passing you by or that nothing's happening in your world. You might be feeling a little bit alone or maybe you're even feeling a little bit rejected in this energy, right? The orphaned card is a challenge.
challenging one to deal with, okay? So there could be just a certain situation in your world, or this could just be how you're feeling, especially at the beginning of your week, right? And if you look at this card, right, she's there, she's all alone, she's dark, she's dreary. So you might just have a little bit of a case of the blues, um, at least to start out your week. I think things get a little bit better, um, but you might just, you know, feel this energy a little bit. So maybe there's uh, a specific situation um, that's making you feel left out, right? Maybe there's like being a party or an event or something like that. And you find out that your friends or something are going and you haven't been invited along. Or maybe you feel as though, you know, maybe you've got some people that are, you know, going out on the town and going for dinner. And maybe you're feeling like I can't afford it. Right. And so this puts you in this you know, very challenging kind of energy, right? Like I'm all alone. I've got no help, no support, and I just can't afford the things that I want, right? And it's a reality for a lot of people right now. Um, got very crazy prices of things in the, uh, in the world. Uh, I don't think they're all justified, but that's just me. I think it's just money gouging and things like that. Um, and people, corporations taking advantage of the little guy. Um, but anyway, so whatever it is, you might be feeling a little bit down in the dumps right now, feeling as though nothing's going your way, feeling as though, you know, maybe if it wasn't for bad luck, you'd have no luck, right? So it's kind of a down, very down kind of energy. There might be things, some things that are changing um, around you that you can't necessarily control. Um, and so again, yeah, you're maybe like licking your wounds, that kind of thing. So, but spirits wanting to remind you here in this energy that whatever you're dealing with, everything happens for a reason. Even if you're dealing with loss, right? Um, you're dealing with being rejected or you're dealing with like a breakup or maybe you've been laid off from your job or maybe you're just kind of feeling like you're not enough or you don't have enough. Spirit says here in this energy that everything is happening for a reason and it's always darkest just before the dawn. And we do sometimes have to deal with the difficulties and the challenges and the changes and the losses in our life in order to clear the path for something better to come in for us. So we need to remember in this energy, especially with the co-create card, we need to remember that we attract things to us, right? So you might not feel like you fit in. You might not feel like anything's going your way, but spirit wants you to look up. Because there are things coming to fruition, things that are blossoming in your life, things that you are manifesting in your life, maybe things that you've been waiting for. You're always co-creating with the universe, with spirit. Your energy, like attracts like. The energy you put out is what flows back to you. Your intentions that you set, okay, set the stage for things that you want to come to fruition and manifest in your life. And there's things that are happening. There's doors that are opening for you. You might not see them yet. But there's things happening in the background. And so spirit really, really, really wants you to be aware of this energy, this orphaned energy, okay? Because we don't want to block anything from coming in, but we also don't want to attract the wrong stuff, right? Because, you know, people think, okay, yeah, law of attraction, right? Yes, um, my energy, I'm, you know, attracting things towards me. But the thing is, is that we attract things that match our vibration. And if our energy, our vibes are negative, we're feeling down, right? Not that we shouldn't honor those feelings because we should, right? Always, always, always should. But it's important to process them and then let them go and then move forward, right? It's like, I'm not going to let this keep me down anymore. I'm more confident than this, right? And I'm going to look at things in a different way. I'm going to take action. I'm going to take charge. And quite often that will hugely shift our energy around and then the positive things can come in, right? So we can manifest anything that we want in our lives, both the really, really good and the negative ones, the really, really bad, right? If you think that everyone is out lying to you and manipulating you and not working in your favor, you're going to attract more of that. And I always do use the example of thinking about getting out of the bed on the wrong side, right? Get out on the wrong side of the bed. And maybe you get out in the bed in the morning and the first step you take, you slam your toe into your dresser. Man, oh man, that's a wake up call, right? How do you deal with that energy? 
laugh it off, say, oh, holy crap, man, that hurt. And you hobble around your bedroom and you're like, oh, ho, ho, well, my day can only get better from here and I don't need a cup of coffee now. I am wide awake, right? That's dealing with that very painful thing in a positive way. Or do you go the other way? Do you say, holy crap, that really hurt. That hurt them. Yeah, that's just not the way I wanted to start my day. And oh my God, things are just going to get worse from here on out. And then they do because that's the energy that you're attracting to you. So be very aware of that because you are in the power of, you are in the energy of manifestation, right? There are things opening up for you, blossoming for you, improvements headed your way, opportunities, doors opening for you, whatever it is that you want. You're in this co-create energy with spirit, with the universe. Okay. And we need to make sure that we're open and receptive. This is not an open and receptive energy with the orphaned card, right? So we need to turn the page. So process whatever it is you need to process. Okay. Think about things, write things down, burn them away, give them to the universe, burn them safely. If you're doing candle work, uh, we have enough fires in the world, right? Um, and then we need to open. We've got the two of cups, ace of cups. See, something's coming in for you. And we've got the Knight of Cups. Okay, so some of you feel like you're going nowhere with a relationship and that nothing's happening for you and that maybe someone hasn't committed, um, maybe someone hasn't proposed, um, anything like that. And uh, I think you're probably going to get what you're looking for this week. We've got the Justice card at the bottom of the deck as well. So some of you may actually have like a marriage proposal, right? Legally binding agreement there with the Justice card. Justice is also justice is served. You've got some good karma, balance, harmony, um, all those contracts, all those commitments kind of thing and a resolution, right? Justice is served in your favor. We've also got balance and harmony coming in there as well, right? So we're getting rid of this orphaned energy and embracing something new. But with the two of cups, right? Love, partnerships, balance, harmony, the ace of cups, something new, something improved and the knight of cups. You got some love and romance going on here for some of you and the knight of cups, especially with the ace of cups, right? We've got love in the air. Um, you've got gifts, maybe a proposal or an invitation for some of you. You're meeting someone new and this is a soulmate energy. It doesn't have to be romantic. It can be friendships. It can be partnerships, but this is a very high vibe connection. Okay. And why? Because because you've been calling it in. Okay. And it's something that's going to chase the blues away. Right. And it's something that's going to show you the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. So uh, you could have a friend that invites you somewhere. You could be meeting new people, maybe new romantic interests, maybe new creative partnerships, new friends, um, marriage proposals. Okay. Or, you know, just you know, uh, expression of very positive feelings, expressions of love and things like that. A lot of love in the air for you guys this week. Yay. Okay. Cause it started out not so great. Right. Um, I think that if you've been dealing with some loss, I think you're going to be figuring out and finding and discovering and feeling a turning point this week. Okay. The two of cups. Yes, it does bring soulmate energy and it brings true love and partnerships. Right. But it also represents the balance within you you being able to, to connect with your higher self, with your spirits, with your angels, right? And this is your ability to find that balance, that harmony within, find that peace within, especially with that ace of cups coming in, right? This can be forgiveness, it can bring healing, it can bring calm, it can bring peace, but ultimately we're opening our heart here. You're feeling a little bit more positive, feeling more creative, you're turning things around, right? And in the most healthy way possible, all right? But the aces are given from spirit. They also carry a little bit of luck with them. So whether this is just things turning around for you and improving in your life or whether it's something new that's opening up for you, it's something that's going to make you happy. It doesn't have to represent people. Um, it can be situations that are turning around for you. It can be you discovering a new path forward. And yes, it can be the doors of opportunity um, opening up for you, right? Because we do have the Knight of Cups bringing you an invitation, a gift, an offer. This can be someone who um, is very caring, very loving, very generous in their energy. Someone who is on a quest, they're on a mission, right? They got something to talk to you about. So this can be someone offering you a job, right? Especially, uh, especially over here with the justice card at the bottom of the deck, right? Contractual obligations. 
So this can be where you get a job offer, you get a contract, maybe you find something that you want to buy. Um, and this is you getting a big yes from the bank or something, right? Someone calls you up and they're like, yes, your loan is approved. And you're like, hallelujah, and you're jumping for joy, right? And, you know, why are there no pentacles? Well, because the money, uh, the money doesn't necessarily matter, because it's all about how this is making you feel this week, right? You're very in touch with your feelings with your emotions this week. All right. And in a positive way. And again, maybe you are embracing that energy of love, not war, right? You're embracing some peace. So you could have a big yes on something that's coming in. So you might get a phone call and someone does have that offer, that opportunity for you. Okay. But the Knight of Cups can also be you and your energy, right? And this is you embracing this high vibe. This is you. You're on a mission. You're moving forward. You're making all the right moves. Okay. You're um, feeling a little bit more confident and you're feeling a hell of a lot more positive than maybe you were previously. So again, we're turning things around in a very healthy way. And whether this Knight of Cups is your energy or another person, whether you know them or not at this moment, okay, this is all bringing you in wonderful things. But yes, with the Ace of Cups and the Knight of Cups, some of you might be getting a gift of some kind this week and probably something that you really wanted. All right. We have the Judgment card here. Beautiful. We have the Judgment card as your advice from Spirit, um, represented by Archangel Michael, quite often rules this Judgment card. And this is an energy of releasing and letting go giving your worries, your troubles, your doubts, your fears, your negative energy, okay, writing it all down, stating some positive intentions out there, whatever it is, you're giving it back. You're like, I release this energy. I do not want to feel this way anymore. And so spirit says here, give your troubles, your worries, your doubts to me, right? It's time to let something go and it's time to get ready, right, to welcome in and to attract and to embrace the new that coming in. The judgment card can be an energy of releasing, letting go, cutting ties, right? You're clearing your energy and you're moving forward. It can also be one of forgiveness. Second chance is possibly here as well. All right. And number one, we need to forgive ourselves, right? As humans, we do tend to harbor feelings of guilt or shame. We tend to put responsibilities on ourselves, even for someone else's actions. And we talk about forgiveness with a lot of people, right? But we don't always talk about forgiving thyself. So forgive yourself, release anything that you have been harboring that really doesn't belong to you. And even if it does, right, even if you feel as though you've done something wrong, okay, we do need to remember that we need to forgive and heal ourselves so that we can move forward. All right. But in this energy here, I do think that there is maybe an opportunity opening up. You might get a second chance. Maybe you feel it within your heart to give someone a second chance or maybe even your faith is restored, right? And we're shooting that negative vibes um, out the window and we're ready for the next stage in our adventure. All right, so we have the Six of Pentacles here as well, and this is blessings headed your way. So the Six of Pentacles, <laughs> gifts headed your way. Okay, so yes, um, this can be exchanging of gifts. All right. Um, an energy exchange, if you will, but this can be something out of the blue for you. Quite often, the Six of Pentacles is something that comes in as maybe a little bit of a surprise, maybe something that you were hoping for, though, right? So it's not a total surprise, but, you know, maybe something that you've been waiting for for a while. But this does remind us of the energy that flows around us. So the blessing could be that you recognize. And remember the energy that you put or you're, that you're putting out there is what you're attracting back to you. And the thing is, the energy we attract back to us multiplies, right? It's amplified. So which one are you going to do? The beautiful co-create energy, all of this high vibe energy, or are we going to get stuck in that orphaned energy, right? So I think part of the blessing here is your ability to turn things around, your ability to um, shift your own energy into a more positive direction. But with the Six of Pentacles, we're finding balance, we're finding harmony in our world, right? We're getting on the same page. So you could have a relationship that gets back on track. 
Okay. Um, and again, we might have some gifts. You now this can just be, um, you know, maybe some money. You might find some money in a pocket, but this can be a gift of a person, a gift of healing, um, a gift of love and romance, and maybe even those new connections that are opening up for you. Um, but because we've got pentacles quite often represented by gold, we've got the knight of cups. I mean, he's holding flowers, but there might be some gold in there as well. So there might be some sort of furthering of a commitment of in some way in a relationship there, right? But again, it can also be because this can be payment for something. And so you could have a job offer or something on the table as well, or maybe you get like a little bit of a bonus, right? Maybe you we're starting to feel in that orphaned energy, like, oh, the company said that they're not going to give bonuses, right? But you might actually get a little bit of something there um, to, you know, help you out a little bit. That would all be nice. So I'm going to leave that there for you guys, something circulating back to you in a very wonderful way. I'll leave that there. Hopefully there was something here for you. If so, please like, share, subscribe, all that wonderful energy. And if you're entering the contest, like this video, subscribe to my channel. And I am abundant. It goes in the comment section down below. Do that as many times as you wish on as many videos as you want all the way up until the 31st of August. So I thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this uh, was beneficial to you. Good luck in the week ahead. And I'll see you guys later. Hello there Aquarius, let's have a look and see what we've got for you guys for your week ahead. Messages for Aquarius please. Thank you. We have higher power. Your intuition is on fire this week. All right, pay very close attention to it. Okay, your third eye is open, your crown chakra is open. So this is an awesome week for you guys to engage in some meditative or spiritual practice, whatever it is that you do. And if you don't have any kind of like rituals or practices or anything that you engage in, very simply find some quiet space, find some time to connect with yourself to allow your energy to flow. For some of you, it might be connecting with earth. Maybe you want to feel a little bit more grounded in the week ahead. So you might be connecting with the outdoors or connecting with the ocean or some other bodies of water, whatever you have around you. Um, this can just be sitting in a quiet room and just closing your eyes and just doing nothing, right? That's a form of meditation in and of itself. But whatever it is, you are being called by a higher power. Pay very close attention to any kind of signs, symbols, and synchronicities this week. Um, because I feel as though you're getting some sort of messages or insights. You're probably also going to be feeling um, a big shift in your energy uh, in some way. So maybe you are very much about to level up spiritually this week. Um, maybe you are... Um, seeing things a little bit differently, right? Whatever that happens to be, it's a very positive, very wonderful, very magical, very mystical kind of energy. So embrace your higher power. But ultimately, I feel your intuition is showing you something and guiding you to something. It, you might not be able to explain it. You might not even understand it, but it feels somehow right. Right. So whether you're being steered away from danger or whether you are being encouraged to keep on going on your journey, whatever it happens to be for you, it is some very positive um, insight and guidance. All right. And surprise, surprise, we have the sun coming in here for you guys. OK, the sun is the ruler of Leo, of course, all that high vibe energy. We also have the ace of swords. There's that clarity. There's your connection to your higher power and your crown chakra. And we also have the seven of pentacles. So this way might be where you might want to feel grounded right? The seven of pentacles connected with the earth, connected with growth. And so for some of you here, you might feel that the way to clear your head is to connect with nature in some way, right? Uh, connect with your ocean, with the, sorry, with the, uh, your garden, um, plant a tree. Maybe you want to bring the outside inside, right? You might um, be feeling like you want to bring in some greenery into your house, um, you know, or connect with nature in some other way. So very interesting energy coming in there for you guys. All right. But we do have the sun. So no matter what you've got going on, okay, the sun and the ace of swords, this is an epiphany, like there's no tomorrow. Okay. The sun brings clarity 
to things. And the Ace of Swords brings clarity to things as well. So maybe you're just getting a clear sense of direction. Maybe something is that you've been thinking about, that you've been contemplating for a bit. The Seven of Pentacles is where we are calm, we are patient, but we're assessing things. We're setting the stage, we're strategizing, and maybe we're even looking for a different approach and you might be trying to make a decision. And I think here that if you're doing any of those things, you're going to be getting the clarity, the focus that you need to get that clear sense of direction to that deep knowing that this is what I need to do. This is where I need to go. It's like no doubt. Okay, no doubt whatsoever. So this might be where you are clearing your head a little bit. The sun is very connected with growth and nature as well, right? Being outside, uh, you know, very high vibe, happiest, happiest card in the whole deck. So it does shine a beautiful, positive light on your entire week. All right, but the sun brings success, abundance, growth, fun, um, joy into your life in all ways, okay? And, uh, you know, kind of chases some cobwebs away, right? There's no shadows when we get the sun um, out here. It's very connected with children as well. So um, that fun loving kind of energy. So maybe you're trying to figure out how to infuse more fun into your life or, um, you know, maybe you're like, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to change. And you're kind of very much open uh, to a little bit of change or something that's blossoming. So it's a beautiful energy that's coming in here for you. But yes, the Ace of Swords is a new sense of focus, a clear direction. It is a big yes card. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Two big yes cards. So probably your key to success and your key to way, your key to figuring out your way forward is just to say yes. Okay. Um, but I do think that spirit's giving you a little bit of direction here as well. But the ace of swords, this is the sword of fate, the sword of destiny. Our crown chakra is open. We see things clearly. Got an open mind. Okay. And very, very positive thinking kind of energy, positive communication. You might have some good news. Okay. Or this is just your own thought processes, right? Um, but the, Ace of Swords brings victory and success and also is very commanding kind of energy, right? Commands attention or commands you to pay attention. So all of this here, you are very much in charge this week in a very positive, very healthy way. But we do have the Seven of Pentacles. So this can be where you're really trying to make a decision about something because something has taken root. Something that you have planted, a seed of intention, um, you know, or things that you've been working on, right? Now you're seeing growth. You're seeing things blossom in your world. But now you're like, okay, I've nurtured this thing. I've nurtured my life. I've nurtured this project, whatever it happens to be. I've nurtured it to this point. Now I've got something to show for it. And now you might be trying to think, okay, do I need to make any changes? Do I need to fine tune something? Is something still giving me growth? Um, where I am right now? Or is it time to do something different? Because we can sometimes take an alternate approach with the seven of pentacles. So you might be trying to make a very important decision on something in your life right now, something that you've been committed to and something you've been waiting for um, as well, right? Something you've been working towards. So, and I think here that you're going to be making that decision, whatever that is for you. Um, but the seven of pentacles can also uh, represent a time of harvest. And with the sun energy coming in there, right? This is a time of harvest for you. So again, something may be opening up for you this week. And this is something that is ultimately very positive for you. And something that's exciting and something that, you know, you want in your life, right? So harvest that um, abundance that is around you, whatever that looks like to you, okay? But be a little bit flexible and adaptable here as well. Um, but I think patience is a little bit of a key for you here as well, just to take a step back, to ground your energy, to embrace a little bit of calm and peace and patience in your life. And then you'll be able to um, really see the potential of things or appreciate Okay, what you have um, or what is coming in for you. So awesome energy there for you guys. All right. We've got the Queen of Pentacles. <laughs> very interesting. The Queen of Pentacles is here as your advice from spirit. The Queen of Pentacles is very connected to earth to your garden, to your abundance, to the things that you've planted, right? The queen of pentacles nurtures 
this plant that you have planted previously. All right. And so I think spirit is saying here for some of you, number one, it's important for you this week to ground your energy so that you don't fly away, right? Uh, with that higher power energy, right? So before you do engage in any spiritual practice of any kind, just make sure you center and ground your energy, right? Whether you do go outside, you connect with nature, great day, great week for you to do that. Um, but ultimately the queen of pentacles is spirit saying to you that something that you've been working towards is blossoming into your world. You might need to make a little bit of change or you might need to still be a little bit patient, but you're starting to see the results of your labor. So be connected with your ambitions, with your manifestations, get connected with the earth, connect with the gar with your garden. Okay. But ultimately this is an energy where we take care of ourselves, where we're calm, where we allow things to come in or to grow or to blossom in our life. This could just be a time of personal growth for you, spiritual growth for you. Okay. Um, or it's a time when there's something happening in your physical world. The queen of pentacles is a very much a homebody kind of energy. So some of you, funny thing, uh, it can go either way here. Some of you spirit is saying it's a great week for you to focus on your home, focus on where you live, spend some time at you know, with your home, maybe even declutter because the ace of swords, right? We're clear on things. So maybe you need to declutter your home, right? Rearrange your furniture, make it feel fresh and make the energy flow a little bit better, right? So you might be feeling like a little bit of a homebody this week. And that's just exactly what you need right now. For others of you here, spirit is saying, okay, you've been nurturing your goals. You've been taking care of business. You've been very patient, right? You've been successful. The queens are successful. Okay. And now, and you've been spending a lot of time with yourself or at home. And now with the sun energy here, it's time for you to go out and have some fun. So some of, uh, some of the Aquarians out there have been very much cocooned away and just taking care of your own things right now. And, um, you know, you want to do the opposite this week. All right. Get out, have some fun, enjoy the sun, um, do something fun for yourself, spend some time with people, whatever it happens to be for you, whatever your version of fun is, but you're being encouraged to get outside, right? Others of you, it's time to come back inside a little bit and take care of the space that you live in or take care of business at home. But whatever your situation is, you've got growth and you've got abundance in your life. We also might have something to celebrate because we've got the four of wands and the four of wands is your blessing for you this week, feeling grounded, feeling rooted in reality, feeling like you got a good foundation, but getting out and having fun. This can be a celebratory energy, some good news. So there might be some good news on the way for you. You might have an opportunity to go out and connect with people. Um, and this can be birthday parties, anniversaries, public events, whatever it is. There's a, a very celebratory vibe that comes in here with the four of wands, but ultimately you're feeling good. You're feeling grounded, safe, and secure in this energy. But yes, you might have a cause for celebration this week. So um, these people here, they're dancing, they're having a good time. So again, maybe you kind of want to connect with your physical body, go out there and get some movement going and uh, you know really live your best life but the four of wands is also um, an energy a card of higher level of commitment good news um, and also abundance in in your life there as well so remember to give thanks for everything that you have and everything that is still growing and blossoming in your world and this sets the stage for more good things to come in the four of wands is also known as the 1111 card um, um, new beginnings, fresh starts, and also improvements, but it's also 1111, known as your make-a-wish card, right? And with that ace of swords there right now, it's a great week for you to very much connect with your higher power, connect with the universe there and manifest something, make a wish and make it big in this energy, okay? But then remember, you got to be patient and open 
to that as well. It's always one thing that we forget sometimes. So a lot of great energy here for you guys this week. I really hope that you get a little bit of calm energy and a little bit of fun um, that you've been probably waiting for. It's been a lot of ups and downs last couple of months. So this might just be um, a really high vibe, positive week for you guys. So I'll leave that there. I hope it was something here for you. If so, please like, share, subscribe. And if you're entering the contest to win a free personal reading like this video or any that I post all the way up till August 31st, subscribe to my channel and I am abundant goes in the comments box down below. So have a good one Aquarius. We're moving on to Pisces. Hello there Pisces. Let's have a look and see what we've got for you guys in your week ahead. Messages for Pisces please. Thank you very much. We've got deep knowing. So when we get the deep knowing energy, this is number one about um, getting a deeper understanding about something, okay? Also trusting your inner wisdom. So if you're trying to make a decision or if you've got some things going on this week, right, you have all the answers, you have all the wisdom, all the knowledge that you need internally. So you may not need to um, look to external sources for your answers or to make a decision, right? You know deep down what you need to do, what you want to say, what you want to change or how to proceed going forward and even what to what to let go of, right? So trust your inner wisdom, trust your judgment because you are not going to go wrong this week, okay? Um, this may also be an energy here where you are gaining a little bit of enlightenment or understanding about people around you. It's a very empathetic kind of energy. And so you might be, you know, when we're, when we empathize with people, right, we can, you know, really feel their emotions. We can feel their energy. Um, so just be a little bit reminded there to kind of ground and protect your energy, right? We, we can still be an empath and we can still understand people's energies or where they're coming from, right? Without absorbing what they're putting out there. So just a little bit of a reminder there because this is very much tied to your ability to be empathetic with people around you, right? It's like, I really understand. Okay. And, but you don't want to absorb anything, <laughs> anything out there, right? Your energies, your energy, their energies, their energy, right? And you can sense it, you can feel it. Um, but you don't want to carry it with you, right? So just remember to ground and protect your energy. We have the two of cups, we've got the high priestess, and we've got the tower in reverse there for you. Okay, so finding balance and harmony is going to be very important for you this week. The two of cups is quite often where we do feel like we're on the level playing field, or we do feel like we're in balance in our lives, or maybe even with people around us as well. Okay, but the two of cups is also an energy of connection, of partnerships, and love. Okay also, but also one of connecting with your higher self, right? Um, so this is especially with the high priestess, okay? This is a great week for you to go within, to look within, and again, trust yourself. The high priestess reminds you, you got the book of knowledge within you. And, you know, when we're connected in this high vibe energy, you're connected to your higher self, you're connected to spirit, you're connected with, you know, all of this, um, you know, spiritual energies, right? But you're also in receiving mode, right? So you're connected, you're receiving, the energy is flowing around you in a very positive way, but you're tapping into your inner resources, right? The high priestess is the keeper of secrets and mysteries. So there might be something that you are dealing with or that you will be dealing with in your week ahead where there is a little bit of mysterious energy around it or it's something that was previously unknown, but your intuition told you about it, okay? Because um, quite often our intuition is giving us a little bit of a heads up about things before they actually happen in our physical world. But with both of these twos, partnerships, balance, harmony, but also decisions. And in the high priestess, you have that wisdom, that knowledge within you. You've got that knowing within you. So take that step back from situations in your world this week. Okay, try and find a little bit of balance in your life, right? Uh, try and find some quiet space, some quiet time for yourself there. And then you will really get in the flow of the energy. And this is where the ability to make a decision becomes a little bit easier, right? Because you're not second guessing yourself, you're not doubting yourself, and you're really tapped in and tuned in to all of this wonderful esoteric energy that you've got around you. And also, of course, your own book of wisdom and knowledge. 
but there might be something here that you're um, keeping to yourself um, this week as well. Maybe you're keeping some feelings to yourself this week, right? Um, you might not want to rock the boat or you're trying to figure out how to proceed with something before you deal with something, right? And it's quite often important for us. And especially since we have Mercury retrograde coming in this week, it is going to be very important to do yourself a little bit of a gut check before you put yourself out there or speak something. Um, you know, um, it's like think before you act to think before you speak, right? Rehearse something in your mind, right? Before you get something out in the open. So I think there's some stuck energy here, okay? We do have the tower um, for you and the tower is in reverse. So something is hidden, okay? Maybe you are hiding something or maybe you just haven't been ready to reveal something yet, okay? You might even be ignoring something here in this energy. There's something going on around you um, and instead of embracing it, right, you're maybe kind of mm, feeling a little bit stuck or feeling, you know, like you have been kind of just pushing something away and ignoring something. So when we get the tower in reverse, we can kind of go a couple of different ways here. We can sometimes, you know, say, okay, there has been something that has shifted internally, externally, with people, with us, with, with situations, whatever it happens to be. There's something that's already um, had a shock, something that's already changed, something that's already um, occurred, right? And now we're dealing with the aftermath. So it's like the calming after the storm kind of thing, right? So you're just trying to figure out what this all means. Or you're trying to figure out what your next steps forwards are, okay? But you can also suggest here in this energy, especially with the deep knowing of the high priestess, okay, and the tower in reverse, that there's some changes that need to happen, but maybe you're not quite ready to make that change. There might be something holding you back, or there is an air of secrecy, about it there with that high priestess. So maybe you know that you need to rock the boat in some way, but you're just not quite at that point yet where you're ready to reveal what the changes that you're making. Now, this can be in a relationship, right? Maybe there's something that has to change in a relationship. You know what that is, but you're not ready to address it. Okay, this can be something in a job, right? You're looking for a new job, something where you can partner up um, in a healthier way, get more fulfillment, where things are a little bit more um, fulfilling for you, right? You're making a decision. What does that look like for you? And you know, right, that you have to change that situation, um, but you're not telling anyone about it yet and you're not ready to make your move yet, right? So you're kind of like creating your own, um, stagnant energy a little bit, but it's, it's stagnant externally, probably not internally with this, with this energy. So it's like, you know, deep down what you have to do and what changes you need to make or what you need to let go of here. Right. And it's just a matter of timing for you. I feel like here in this energy, but I do feel like you're getting a deeper understanding. The majority of you about things that have been shifting and changing in your world. And now you're navigating the aftermath of that. How do I deal with this? How do I deal with this? Where do we go from here? That kind of thing. And I feel like here you do have the ability to get things back on track OK, um, or to move past something in a healthy way, because this is a very calm energy right over here. And the tower in reverse can represent a little bit of calm. OK, but it can also represent where we are, you know, a little bit stuck there. So depending on what's going in, on in your world, it can go either way with that, because we've had the shakeups, we've had the upheaval. But I do feel here that maybe there is. Um, you most likely that is keeping something to yourself for the moment. All right. And you might not reveal that um, this very present day. But we've got the six of swords coming in here for you as advice from spirit. OK, things have been troubling. Things have been turbulent. Things have been chaotic. And now is your opportunity to move forward from that. OK, um, better times ahead. So spirit saying to you here, to trust in your journey and to trust that whatever is shaking up, whatever upheavals have happened, whatever surprises or chaos has come your way, or whatever you do need to shake up, it's for a reason, it's for a purpose, it's a rite of passage for you. We do sometimes have to go through these, um, you know, these turbulent times in order to see clearly what we want and how to proceed forward, right? And to embrace that peace and calm. So the Six of Swords 
is a rite of passage, right? We've got to experience this to move forward in a better way, a better direction, or to even just to gain appreciation of things, right? We don't appreciate the good things unless we've been through the troubling and challenging things, right? We appreciate the good times a little bit more. So whatever you're dealing with or whatever you will be dealing with, there's a reason and there's a purpose, but there is a forward movement that's here with this six of swords. So remember, you're always guided. You're always protected. There's a higher power at work for you here, right? And we've got all of this wonderful energy right there. So call on your angel spirits, guys. If you're feeling very uncertain um, or if you're feeling oh, just all tangled up and wrapped up in knots, okay, ask them for their guidance, right? Um, ask for some signs and you will get them. But the Six of Swords also shows here that there might be some communication challenges in the week ahead. And of course, we've got Mercury retrograde, <laughs> right? And so this can be you taking a different approach at communicating with people in your world this week, right? Instead of engaging in conflict or drama, you're going to move away from that, right? You're not going to engage in the High Priestess. It's very calm energy, but also very mute, very quiet energy. And the Two of Cups, it's like, I'm just going to maintain the status quo here. And with the Tower, I ain't getting involved, right? There's something going on. I'm not getting involved in it. It's none of my business, right? So in this energy here, okay, you're avoiding confrontation or avoiding that drama because it's really nothing to do with you, right? And so your ability to take that step back and walk away may very, very much benefit you in your week ahead, okay? But I do feel like here, if you are thinking, you know, that Maybe you need to make some sort of change in your life. The Six of Swords shows movement, moving forward. So this can be spirit signed to you saying that, yes, this is the time for you to think about making changes or moving on from a situation, um, you know, or speaking about what you've been thinking about, right, to, you know, it might shake things up a little bit, but you'll come out better for it in the end. We've got the death card here. So changes. <laughs> Hello. Okay. The death card here is your blessings headed your way. This is Scorpio energy. The, um, the death card represents endings. It represents new beginnings, but it also represents transformation, growth, and evolution in our life, right? So again, change is a good thing as a positive change. If you're dealing with the aftermath of some changes and some turbulence, right? Things may very much settle down for you this week. And it's a blessing for you, maybe a blessing in disguise. All right. But change because we're human, right? We don't like change. We like things to stay the same, even if they're not really wonderful, but at least we know what we're getting into. Right. And but your ability to embrace and adapt to change is your blessing. All right. So remember that in that energy, we do sometimes forget that. This can be a time of personal growth for you, of spiritual growth, of emotional growth for you, right? The death card is all about that spiritual shift, right? So, you know, and especially with the high priestess, the deep knowing, right? Find that space for yourself to meditate or just to ground your energy, to allow the energy to flow, work with the moon, possibly, especially with that high priestess, very connected with the moon. Okay. But I think here that there is a big shift happening very much internally within you, right? And this is helping you to move forward, this helping you navigate things in your life and help you make some decisions, right? You might have a change of mind, you might have a change of heart, but it's good for you, right? This is what's maybe meant to be for you, all right? So yes, the death card change, endings, new beginnings, whatever that looks like, right? But that evolution um, that is going on internally and externally in your world it's good for you. It's a blessing for you, even if it makes you a little bit scared or uncertain. Okay. So you're also have the ability here to make positive change this week, no matter how big, no matter how small. So I'm going to leave that there for you, Pisces. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please like, share, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And if you're entering the contest, like and subscribe and leave I am abundant in the comment section down below. But I hope you have a fabulous week and I'll see you guys later. Bye.